Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, this is the 143rd edition of the Journey series. I'm going to start off with the Kultastav, the Mahastav of Dodgy Failure. And it's really got goofy and funny at the end. I got three audios um, that I didn't cover in my earlier video, my last Journey series. And this picture of uh, Bryce Canyon here, when this picture disappears, if you've already heard it, because I've put this video up as a standalone, two standalone videos on my other channel, the Exposing Dodgy Heartfulness Cult um, Scam, the Dodgy Heartfulness Cult, the Heartfulness Cult Dodgy Scam channel, which is linked in the description box of any of these videos. I need another 400 subscribers and about another thousand views to get that channel monetized and that would be a good thing um you know i won't make any money off it but at least i'll make something like 10 bucks you know <laughs> per video but you know it'll be something and it'd just be good to have it monetized for whatever reason um so if people want to because it's a backup channel as well i can always change the name and run it as a backup channel if something happens to my you know these channels or whatever you know it's on a different account and all those things and so those of you who are interested in doing that, subscribing, it would, you know, I'm at 600 subscribers and I need 1,000 to get it monetized with the extra views, which by the time this is out, I'll be pretty close to getting that done. But anyways, um, you know, it was interesting, the whole, um, the Mahastav. And I'd been talking about how, you know, I was kind of created into this thing, right, um, to be the, you know, part of the voice of resistance to this debacle that's dodgy but you know it's the failure so evident and it's so bad and it's so not Saj Marg it's the opposite of Saj Marg and so anybody who kind of gets a sense of what Saj Marg is would realize that and Dodgy's created something that's not Saj Marg and it's failing by its own standards underperforming you know they want a million people they got 50,000 there and their best day was 100,000, 120,000 people watching a yoga video, <laughs> you know, and we only had like 10 comments. So those are inflated views. Um, so it's just a failure, right? But, you know, it is what it is. And so here's the, um, the, th the three other audios. And then um, after that, you can, you know, get to the, if you've watched that, you can skip through after this picture disappears and there'll be something new at the end of it okay so let's get into the cultistav the the um Mahastav thing and so to people who are dwelling on the surface and believing the hype believing the you know the advertising believing the the official story dodgy prodigy is pushing it out and you know the whole event we look at this as some kind of success the same kind of people who believe in the united nations right when the United Nations is a corrupt organization that makes it looks like there's some sort of cooperation and unity when there clearly isn't, right? When the atrocities are happening now in Palestine and the UN can do nothing and doesn't really want to do anything, and then the UN ordering the, um, the regime change in Libya when Gaddafi was doing a good job for his people for financial reasons, reasons and that whole debacle, like in all the human trafficking the UN's involved with. And so you could say the UN's great if you look at just the their official rhetoric. But in terms of the um, Sajmarg system, this idea of bringing all these organizations together was never anything that any of the other masters intended. There was no plan for that. It was never mentioned. There was no joint events planned, right? And so let me go and read some part of uh, Reality at Dawn. This is the My Religion chapter. And he starts, this is towards the end of the, the chapter. It's the first chapter in Reality at Dawn. And he goes into why all the other religions and why all this, you know, what's happened to spiritual worship and the worship of God, and not even worship, but the idea of connecting with God has been lost by these corrupt religious people, right? Um, Babaji refers to these people as quacks in, I think, one of his other books. But he says here, St. Kabir has nicely expressed the idea in the following lines. He's talking about 
idol worship. If by worshiping stone one can reach God, I shall ready to worship a mountain. But for this purpose, the grinding stone, which grinds the corn to feed the world, may be better. And then Babaji says this, To my view, those who stick this sort of worship throughout their life are wading through the deep mire of ungodliness. It is extremely difficult to extricate, extricate them out of it. In course of time, after constant practice, they become so firmly rooted to it, they cannot even think of getting away from it at any stage. They remain at a standstill. They do not want to get rid of the ideas they have already imbibed. Further, they apply their power or thought and make them stronger or more solid. Everything casts reflections in a, in a, sim, a form similar to its own. If the thing is subtle, its reflection will also be subtle in character. And if it is gross, the reflection likewise will be gross. The whole chapter is about religion and religious prejudice and these things, right? And how religion is actually hurting people and not helping. If we concentrate on a solid thing, we are sure to become ourselves inwardly solid. Great havoc has been wrongly has been wrought by teachers who have presented to the ignorant masses everything they have learnt, learnt from the holy books in hard and solid form. It destroys the reflexive power of the mind. If one dissolves such a horrible state, he is gone forever. He loses his approach to a broader vision, and the capacity for further progress becomes extinct. Such person may be compared to frogs in a well with a little field of activity which they consider all and enough. They remain whirling around in a closed sphere, hemmed in on all sides. They are hammering at the sides of the things all their life. Stories and illustrations of gods are all and enough for them. When they practice, when the practice continues for a long time, for, for long, the cells of the brain are affected and become saturated with thoughts which grow stronger day by day. And so um, this is just, you know, the whole chapter is like this, but this is just some of the ill effects. Finally, the whole nervous system is affected. The external opacity gradually creeps inwards and completes the work. They are now completely impervious, both within and without, to the passage for divine light. Their approach to inner self is completely barred. I shall prefer to call them as living stones, the hardened crust, which thus develop keeps them aloof from the slightest association with anything higher or finer. They are almost spellbound by its effects, which considered to be spiritual stage, although in fact they are far away from it. I'm reading this because this is why you don't partner with these types of organizations, right? My personal experience in the spiritual field has revealed to me that it is pretty hard and tedious task to shatter the hard crust created by such forms of worship practice from the hearts of those coming to me for spiritual pursuit. If one wants to free himself from the bondages of the soul, he must necessarily clear off the layer, the layer of grossness and solidity settled over his mind as a result of these stupefying practices. Another form of worship commonly thought to be more advanced is to sing or recite these sight and chorus lines and praise of gods and goddesses they worship. People assemble together in parties in late hours of the night, sing in chorus at the top of their voice, disturbing the calm atmosphere of the night. They think they are thereby discharging a pious duty of injecting, as they say, into the ears of as many as they can the sacred name of God. Not only this, not only this, they sometimes even make use of a microphone to broadcast the sound. They are totally unmindful of the discomfort or inconvenience it might cause to persons who possibly might be in need of repose after the day's tiring labor or illness. You know, the people are sleeping. And I've, you know, heard this when I was in India. It's very annoying. And oftentimes they're very poor quality speakers and it just goes on all night. It may be at the same time be offering serious disturbance to those who practice meditation in the calm of hours of the night. Moreover, the practices generally followed today is of no great utility in our spiritual progress and consequently no substantial gain is derived there, therefrom. The chantings of the Sanskritians may be compared to more appropriately to the groans of a sick man which only offered him a temporary consolation but do not actually relieve him of his pain. So these chantings are of no avail to them except that they are charmed by the effect of the sweet melody which helps to draw their thoughts from the time being in the idea, into the ideal view. 
Now, whatever we think or contemplate produces vibrations within. When these vibrations multiply, they create power, which gushes out with a sound. The vibrations carry with them the effect of thoughts and feelings of individuals, so the pious effect of the pure minds in the company is likely to be spoiled by this evil effect of impious minds. The undesirable element must therefore be kept away in full advantage and be derived from these performances. If full advantage is to be derived from these performances. So what he's saying is all the people who are singing, their thoughts and their energy and their, you know, whatever they are as people, whatever their place is on the spiritual path, and if they're gross, then their grossness is coming through their voice, right? And it's disturbing the atmosphere. And even if there are some pious people who are chanting, the lower people, the, the level of vibrations coming from them is going to contaminate the whole thing. And so, yeah. The undesirable element must therefore be kept away if full advantage is to be derived from these performances. Such was the practice followed by this person who I can't pronounce who held Sanskritians congressional ch co congregational chants with a party consisting only of those thoroughly known to him for goodness and piety. The performance was therefore conducted behind closed doors and no outsider was allowed in. in. Sanskritian Congressional chant, in fact, does not offer means of pri uh, preliminary advancement, but is rather helpful only to some, to some extent, after sufficient advancement. It must, it, it, it is most effective only when conducted in a congressional atmosphere, overflowing with pious thoughts. So he says, if saints are doing this, there could be some benefit, but there is no saints doing this. It may also serve as a receptive change of the the serious mental practices. Moreover, unfortunately today, the ideal too kept in view during these practices is not the highest. In most cases, they remain all along in close touch with the idea of gods in the physical form, keeping in view their gross body and activities. The effect of this gross conception is nothing but an external grossness and opacity, which they inhale all along during their practice. A, gro a gross conception will necessarily keep them within bounds and limitations, and the final approach or absolute freedom can never be possible. This is the reason why, in spite of years of practice, they find themselves at the lower level of attainment. They are, to say, searching everything in a stagnant pool where even oxygen, uh, oxygen necessary for the upkeep of life is wanting. They have made such a pool in their permanent abode. Proper light is needed to make pearls we must strive for in order to secure absolute freedom from bondage is to become the lightest and the finest and closely corresponding with godly attributes and securing complete similarity with him the nectar of real life is for him and him alone who brings himself up to the standard required for the purpose again there's just all of these teachings in a variety of these books these five short books that babaji wrote and he talked about how mantras and a lot of these modern day practices, they once had value, but now they're the essence of the reason for doing it and the, and the way that they're being done has the opposite effect and also often causes a person to get grossness, like he said in this one, that's hard to clean off. People would come to Babaji and because of their previous spiritual uh, practices, you'd have a lot of difficulty cleaning them and their advancement was blocked because the previous spiritual experiences created heavy solidified grossness in their internal world and kept, kept them impervious, as he says, from the transmission that he was giving them. So their earlier spiritual practice is actually blocking their current spiritual evolution, right? And, you know, it's like they would have been better off doing nothing than doing something that hurt their progress. And so Babaji talked about charlatans and quacks, and yeah, I mean, he gave these names to people labels and there's a lot of talk about all these scammers or people who just didn't know what they were doing and there's been a long history and understanding of gurus fake gurus or gurus who hurt their disciples in some way by not being of a, a proper stature and so he talks about that extensively and so the thought of emboldening these practices and validating them was never a part of Sajmar. There was never any of this idea that these 
organizations could be brought together with some positive effect because the system that they're using is actually hurting people. And a lot of these people that are there with this, you know, at this uh, um, cultistov, right, this, you know, Mazdov thing, are amongst those people. Like, I don't know them personally. I don't know their, you know, their stories, but a lot of them look fake. A lot of them that I've seen, of course, Sadhguru, but some of these other ones, and they're preaching things that have been lost, right? The things that weren't efficient in the first place, there'd be no need for Saj Marg if these organizations were doing a good job. You know, Babaji says that Saj Marg was coming here to get rid of these religions and these practices and this temple worship and the idol worship and take all people to a higher level that was previously reserved just for saints. That's the primary teaching of Saj Marg. The reason for Saj Marg is to get rid of the bad stuff that's hurting people and create a new system that's much higher and more developed than these other systems. So this idea of bringing these people together, you know, Dodgy planning to pilfer people from these organizations because they see how great as big as Ashram is, right, is a fallacy. And I'll get into that in a bit. And so one of the casualties already is Diaper Baba. It doesn't appear Diaper Baba is even there and he hasn't been referenced. And he was supposed to do the morning yoga. Now they're doing yoga and this is a big thing for the guy called the Dodgy Truth or a lot of these people who keep on, you know, he sends me a lot of things about articles and things that were written, which I know about already, where Babaji and Charji said that Hatha yoga, you know, exercise yoga is not supposed to be done. And Dodgy's passing out certificates, right? And what Dodgy has said was, okay, if you just like the pure Saj Mark practice, you can still do that. But now we're adding these extra things, Hatha Yoga and Brighter Minds. He said these things by name. You know, I had this clip somewhere when I showed him you know, these videos I made. And he said, we're just adding these extra things. And it sounds kind of good. It's like, well, you can do the practice, but if you, if you want to do more, we have these extra things you can do, which are paid services. You know, some of the stuff is wellness or whatever. And you can also do those things. And people do do those things, at least the wellness things out of, you know, on their own. The problem with that is, is very few people did their practice the way it should be done. And very few people read the books and knew the difference between Saj Marg and everything else and understood or could even feel the transmission. So the majority of people are ignorant of the brilliance of Saj Marg and aren't doing the practice as it is. And then you're bringing things in which are going to, you know, they don't have enough time and enough commitment to do the practice now. And now you're bringing in things that are not supposed to be there that can have conflicting energies. That's why Babaji said, don't do them. And then you bring in also scams like Brighter Minds. And so the whole system is diluted and very few real abiyasis who read the literature and do the practice remain in the system. And so it's that's why it's watered down. Because it was said over and over again, the system is supposed to kept, be kept pure and simple. And you don't need all these other people with their bogus practices that are lesser than Saj Marg to come in, right? And so he's doing Hatha Yoga. And it was scheduled that Diaper Baba would come in at 6.30. This was the original schedule I read to you guys in an earlier video. And Diaper Baba isn't there. And they were doing yoga and they had different practitioners. Now they've done yoga three days and they're doing it in the morning and I think in the afternoon. And Diaper Baba is not a part of it. He's not on the DS. I don't know if he's going to make an appearance at a, just a safe face. But it seems like he was disinvited because the Supreme Court ruling against him that he you know, made um, false false claims for his bogus medicines and things. You know, not that Ayurveda is bogus, but he's running a scam there. And so Dodgy, who's in partnership with this guy for uh, apartment buildings in Kana, is, you know, and has brought this guy to gatherings and the guy has, you know, pushed so many people away and acted weird. And Dodgy keeps on pushing him and forcing him on everybody. Now is embarrassed. The Mahastav's a joke because... One of the central figures, I'm a guy who was almost co-hosting this thing, and he was the only person who was going to be scheduled every day, has been, you know, disinvited. And so it just shows you Dodgy's poor judgment, right? And so they've had this yoga that they're doing, which is against the whole system. You know, there was Abiyasis that used to come in perform unprofessionally, Abiyasis who would sing, 
Abiasis who would put on plays and kids and things, which was kind of fun. It was okay. It was a good thing. In charge, you would watch it. So, so it was enjoyable and light. But now they have all these performances. There's some all Indian dance, classic dance. So that happened after three hours of talks. People with weird hairdos, people who are, you know, religious, whatever they are. And one of the guys was a dude named, um, let me pull it up here. A dude named uh, Anthony Pula is an Indian uh, prelate of the Catholic Church who has been in Metropol Metropolitan Archbishop of Hyderabad. And so he's bishop, this guy's a bishop. And, you know, my wife and I just watched this uh, horrific, um, you know, this uh, show called The Woman in the Wall, which was about these laundries and these child trafficking that the Catholic Church did in Ireland, right? And, you know, they've done the same thing in, in uh, India, Catholic Church problem with abusing, with abuse are playing out in India among, among a mid-summit. So there's priests abusing people and um, abuse cover-ups and silence by India's Catholic Church needs reformation. So, you know, even in India, the Catholic Church, of course, the Catholic Church has had issues everywhere it goes, right? And so they're pushing religion, they're pushing these defunct religions and abusive religions, and they're pushing all these things. They're partnering with these organizations. And again, this was never the intention of the previous masters. It was never said this was part of the plan, right? I mean, Daji started manipulating the practice right off the bat. He changed the um, meditation where he added a um, relaxation technique. And, you know, I didn't have a problem with it because many of us had done relaxation, guided relaxation techniques and, and these things. But why didn't he do it when Chargy was first, when was Chargy was alive, right? If he had Chargy's blessing and permission and Babaji's, why didn't he do it when the other masters were alive, right? He started implementing things, changed the name to heartfulness, changed the maxims. He started changing all these things, bringing in these various practices. None of these things were done. The UN thing was pushed through when Chargy was in the last years of his life and was sick. And these guys did it without really Chargy's blessing because I asked Chargy about it. And he said that he didn't have anything to do with it. And so he advised me to talk to other people. And so these guys were already starting to contaminate the system and the practice by bringing in these partnerships with you know, criminal organizations with abusive organizations. I mean, the Catholic Church and the UN and these other Hindu institutions and things that are, you know, diaper baba. And it just shows bad decision making. And there's no positive effect because all they're doing is talking. There was three hours of talks where people had to sit there and listen to people drone on. It's all it's done is it's a house of Babel, right? You know, it's not a, a real thing. You know, it's a uh, it's like talking doesn't do anything. You know, I can't even remember, you know, when you teach something, you retain it a lot better than when you sit and listen to a lecture. The lecturer gets more educated by the lecturer than the people that the lecturer is lecturing to, right? Like you just retain more when you teach. And I don't remember, you know, I mean, these things that I, I say here, of course, I, I remember them because they come up from time to time when I talk about them. But again, I can't retain all of it. And I've listened to talks, especially talks that weren't given by the master. And I have a good memory. Like I just had to listen in class and I could do well in school. Like I just had to pay attention. And it was hard for me because it was boring and whatever. I wasn't into it. But if I did, I would just be able to, you know, I had a good memory. And you guys can see that from, you know, things I'm able to pull up, you know, ideas and you know, even remembering teachings and things like this in the system here and, and whatever it is. Like my memory is, you know, even at an older age is still really good. And I can't remember like a lot of these things. And, you know, you don't retain these things from people talking. And the lectures are hard to sit through. And it's the same old rhetoric. And it's very solid. It's not light. There seems to be some meditation on the schedule, but it says meditation with various practices and I don't think there's one satsang or one meditation given by Daji. I don't think he's given any satsangs. And if he did, he sucks so bad at it now. He's lost faith in the system. And he's brought in all these things because Daji's trying to put his stamp on Saj Mark. That's why he's done all these things. He came in immediately and he had all these ideas of changes he wanted to implement. 
because he wanted to stand out. He wanted to, you know, the idea of Saj Marg is at the very least you get out of the way. You get out of the way. You get out of the way of yourself. You get out of the way of God. Your ego does. And as a practitioner and a preceptor and the master, that's the very least you can do is make sure your ego doesn't block the flow of the work that's being done. That you allow God to come through you. You become a conduit. And that anything that's done by God is better than anything that you can do, no matter how great a person you are. That by being just a conduit and letting divine energy flow through you, I mean, even in these videos, right? The more I do that, the better the videos are. The more, the more of God there is and the less of me. I mean, that's how Saj Mark works. But he wants to put his stamp on these, you know, his time as master. He wants to be an innovator and he wants to be, and he doesn't have the personality. He doesn't have a visionary personality. He has to steal things from other people and pilfer their, you know, their scams and their things that they're doing instead of holding, you know, the purity of Saj Marg up and just allowing the amount of people to come to come, right? Like he wanted to bring in lots of people and that's why he's doing all these things. It's something he can boast about. You know, when they introduced him, they talked to him how he's a Pudam Basham Award winner and these goofy, you know, things he got, all this stuff, the list of his accomplishments. And he's, you know, hurting the system. So, like, what's the goal of this thing? That all these spiritual organizations will join as one? Well, where are the, are the people coming from these other organizations? Why are they there? Like, are they there for the to listen to their guy that they listen to all the time? Who's there? Is it just heartfulness people? For the most part, I bet the audience is 80% heartfulness people and then, you know, 20% new people from other traditions. And those people aren't even experiencing the, the beauty of the Saj Mark system. So they're not going to be won over. And it just, you know, it looks good on the Internet for people who are, you know, dim-witted and don't have the ability for critical thinking skills and want to believe and have false hope in something. When the system has been said over and over again, needs to come down. I mean, reality at dawn, Babaji said that he was working to take this system down that exists now and replace it with the spiritual system. And there's going to be huge population reduction to make that happen. I read that my vision chapter in the earlier voiceover. And so none of it aligns with the teachings and the whispers of the brighter world messages and Babaji's reality at dawn and all these other teachings by Charji. None of it aligns. And Daji's doing something that no other master proposed and it's failing epically. Like he's watering down the system and he's not bringing in more people. You can see it. You know, there is um, inflated views. We know this. I've talked about that. They buy views in the Heartfulness um, YouTube channel. And the first morning yoga meditation, which was, um, it was done where there was a, it's just Hatha yoga and people lay on their back and do some guided meditation. So they're not doing, in the ashram there, it kind of, they're doing some other meditation that's not um, Saj Mark. And, you know, that was the first thing they did. That was one day ago. That has 60,000 views. Then the thing I talked about earlier, where they introduced the president of India and all these, you know, big wigs are there. That's the big event. And that has 89,000 views, right? And so the event that's going on right now, which the guy's talking, um, the current one that's live has 3,700 people watching. And so that's the one that's streaming right now. And it's no one's watching. Like it's live and only 3,000 people are streaming. Later on, it'll come back that there's 80,000 views or 60,000 views, right? But these videos, um, this one from uh, the second, the second uh, um, yoga session has... 90,000 views and only 10 comments. And all those views came when it was live, there's probably nobody watching it, right? So if there's only 3,000 people watching now live and they're going to come back with 100,000, the other yoga meditation thing has 60,000 views and nine comments, right? And most of those views came afterwards, not when it was live. And so the same old bogus comments. And then the um, the other event that's was three hours long, has 67,000 views, and has 17 comments, right? So it's getting no traction. Of course, the thing now has no comments, so the comments coming in will be afterwards, people watching afterwards, when they boost the numbers. 
because they can't boost the numbers when it's live. I suppose they could, but they don't do that. And so um, the thing's a you know, complete and total joke. So, you know, they have to lie about the amount of views because it's not, there's no traction here. Nothing's going to happen with it, right? It's just bogus. There's one that has 100,000, 102,000 views streamed one day ago. It's one of the bigger events. Again, just people talking and celebrities and religious people. And there's 50 comments, right? So these other organizations, they can't even bring in anything, right? In terms of view count. Like it's not even helping Dodgy show what a great ashram he has and how great his organization is, right? It's not doing anything. There's no movement. Because even the big gatherings that were purely about transmission and cleaning that had tremendous spiritual benefit to all of us who participated, there wasn't much of anything that came of it, right? It's sad to say, you know, America, when uh, Chargy would come here, Chargy would come to America usually in the summer and have gatherings in the Molina Ashram, especially in the beginning when I started in the 90s. And when I started in August of 1993, he had just come to America like a couple weeks before I started. And so when Chargy came to America, people would start. And every satsang, every group meditation around the country would grow. Like there was 60 people that joined all at once right after Chargy came. And then by a year later, it was pretty much back down. Like satsans were usually around 12 people. There were six, six preceptors and there's between 12 and 20 people at every satsan, right? So that showed you like in America, six preceptors for, you know, almost like just one one person for each preceptor practically. And the satsan started to grow after Chargy would come. And then by the time he was about to come again, you know, he was about to come to America again, it would have dissipated and then it would pick up again. Lots of new people would join, old people who hadn't practiced in a while would start practicing. And that's how it went. And then when he stopped coming to America, it just died. Of course, Dodgy can't do anything. And so the system is pretty much dead in America. And it happened all around the world. Chargy would go to a place and there'd be more enthusiasm and there'd be more activity. And then it would just die off. People couldn't sustain it, right? And so those are the gatherings. People would go to a gathering and they'd be really into it and you'd leave and you'd be totally pumped up, enthusiastic about your spiritual practice. And then the energy would dissipate and, you know, it was okay, but it wasn't great. And, you know, that was a pure spiritual uh, gathering, not this piece of crap that they're putting on here, right? Okay, so in terms of this current um, situation that's going on there, it's just dancing and singing. So they're doing this festival thing. Dodgy looked like he had low energy. The dais looked like it was low energy. The crowds have dissipated there. And there's only 3,000 people watching. There's two more events that are going to happen. And it doesn't look like Dodgy's given a sitting. Maybe he has. Either way, who cares? Doesn't matter. The whole thing's a joke. Um, but I'm going to refresh this, you know, after they end with this musical performance and things. I'm going to refresh it and see how there's going to be a jump in views, right? So, you know, there's 3,000 people watching live. And then the next thing is going to be up to 60, 70, whatever thousand people that they're going to claim watch. There'll be like 15 comments. It's just classic, you know, heartfulness uh, scamming, right? And it just shows you the failure of the thing. And you can just feel the end. There's like no energy in it. And, you know, people just don't want to sit around listening to all these different leaders blather on. And they're saying the same kind of thing, right? Inner peace leads to world peace, but... You know, Saj Mark has a method for inner peace and, you know, they're not, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just something that they'll pat themselves on the back and say it's a success. But anyways, I'll, um, you know, conclude this whatever later on today. And then there's two more things tonight. I don't think there's, I'm just scanning through them. They're not really much interest to me. I mean, there's nothing there. Like, you, it's hard to listen to the people. There's, it's totally an Indian thing. It's not for the rest of us. I mean, it's just central uh, in India and Indian you know, religions and spiritual organizations and, you know, all of it. And the embarrassment of Diaper Bob is a big thing. It shows you accomplish his poor judge of character and, like, embarrassment. He one embarrassment after another for heartfulness and dodgy. But anyways, um, like I said, I'll add one more voiceover and I'll get this video out later on today. Today's uh, Saturday, March 16th. Okay, there's more. Um, 
Dodgy just did just did give a talk. I didn't see it. I went through the thing again, scanned it. And Dodgy talked about this being a global event, which is clearly just India. I mean, it's just an Indian thing. And, you know, people are maybe coming from foreign countries who are Abiyasis, maybe a few people from some of these other practices. But a lot of it is, I mean, it's all Indian cultural things. There's no Western music. There's no music from any other culture. There's nothing but Indian stuff. And he's talking about how they want to do this yearly, but he wants to get rid of Charji's birthday and do this on a yearly basis and conduct this global thing. Of course, it's not going to be as big and, you know, they're going to have trouble getting people back and whatever. And they said he left abruptly. And the guy, the sort of, there's a guy whose poster's up there. And I think he's the minister of culture. And he said, you know, he goes, he said, I, I left abruptly and, you know, walked the guy out. This guy, this imam guy or whatever. And the guy says to Daji, I'm going to start meditation. Everybody collapse. Clap, and he says, and my kids are going to do brighter minds. <laughs> and, you know, because they came to the event and he's going to use this to bolster, say that there's all these people now are going to do heartfulness because of that. And, you know, when he's canceling Charji's birthday for this debacle, I mean, he's just, you know, he's, he's using this platform to try to recruit people to his meditation. I mean, that's clearly what he's doing. The other people on the stage can see it, but they're not, you know. They're getting out, they're getting from this whatever they're getting out of it. And then he says he's moved by what the guy said. I was moved by his words. And I realized that, you know, this thing, and he quotes Henry Ford about coming together is only the beginning. Now we have to work together. They're not going to do, you know, they're different methods, right? How do these things translate? You're going to do all of them all at once. Like each method's going to be done. You're going to do various forms of meditation. Babaji was clearly against that. Like that's a mess, right? Anybody with half a brain would know that's a mess. You stick to one method instead of, you know, doing all these different things that have oftentimes conflicting energies and different goals and different purposes. And some of these things have harmful effects, which Babaji, um, you know, talked about. And to th think these people are going to do, you know, he's tried this before. He's tried to poach people from other organizations and it always fails, right? It's classic dodgy and he fails and, you know, they'll call this a success because that's what they do, right? So he said then, people ask him, what's the purpose of this thing? And he goes, well, you know, it's that um, people come together, we listen to each other, we learn about each other, then we go work together and different members from different groups. You know, people couldn't work together in Sajamar. <laughs> like, people didn't get along and projects were always full of cleaning and disagreements, and that's where people would disagree about the Sajamar teachings, Right. They would disagree about the essence of the system. And now you have people with even more widespread differences, each believing in his own system. And people don't listen. No one's listening to these lectures drone on, right? No one's retaining these things. People aren't learning from each other. They're certainly not going to work together. And then he brings up the United Nations. Like he wants to roll out programs and go out there to the world with joint organizations and involve the UN. <laughs> Like, you're not failing big enough as it is with your organization, but you want to fail collectively with these other organizations, right? And now he's pitching for pollution control, which, again, the world's being polluted. That's part of the Sajmark system. Of course, the big pollution that Babaji talks about over and over again is Wi-Fi and electromagnetic pollution. I mean, he talks about all pollutions, and we know the world's being polluted, but he's not going to... Daji's not going to fix it. You know, you have to combat these corporations. And he's going to do the UN bogus, you know, climate change stuff instead of doing real fight against pollution. And he wants to roll out these organizations to, to work collectively. And that has nothing to do with Saj Mark. Saj Mark was purely about spirituality, not getting involved with politics, not getting involved with social reform, not getting involved in even with charity. I mean, they do have free medical care and things at these ashrams but not to do any of those things because just focus on connecting people to God. That's the simple system. Focus on connecting people to God and those people become better people and then well, the world will become, the world system will be a reflection as you have a society of saints. It's helping people to become saints, you know, not getting the title of saint, but being actual saints, right? And so, um, you know, like it's so, it's so ridiculous. <laughs>
But then he says the UN and, you know, all these organizations and all these other practices, including pranayama, aren't going to do anything. It's a regulation of the mind through meditation that's going to change things. Trying to get back to a fundamental Sajmark teaching. But then why do you bring all these people here to tell them your thing is better? Like, it's just rude, right? Like, you know, you guys are all great, but we got you guys all have to do my thing. And they're not going to do it. They have their own organizations. They're financially, you know, they're financial institutions. And he keeps on bringing these people here. So that'll happen, right? There's a vice president. India's there, and that guy's like a tool. I mean, just it's, um, it's bad. You know, the whole <laughs> it's weird. The whole, he looks weird. He looks kind of job of the hut he's like overweight and i mean it's just a it's a bad look and then to bring all those people there and try to sell your thing it's not going to work and it's just it's wrong like it's the wrong approach and you've brought all these practices and energy into the ashram when you're saying that your thing is the best then you're supposed to keep it pure and he wants to do this every year and again it'll be worse each year and they'll claim it's a success because that's what they do right but right now, there's only 2,000 people watching the music. So most people have tuned it off. They've lost 1,000 viewers, one-third of their viewers. And they'll come back and say that 80,000 people watched, right? And then he gets into how there's 16 chakras. He talks about Babaji and Lalaji, of course, not Charaji. But he talks about the 16 chakras that Lalaji um, discovered and all the things Babaji did, you know, briefly. And then talks about, you know, needing a master of quality which is him when he's trying to sell himself there. And then he talks about... <laughs> then he talks about how Jesus said, because there was a priest there, that you only get through heaven through me. And he talks about how Krishna said the same thing and these other traditions. And what does it mean? And he said, well, be the best, Christ, uh, be the best Christian you can be, be the best Hindu you can be. If everyone was doing their practice the way they should, there would be no war and people wouldn't be at a crossroads which he's misused this term before at this gathering. I think he thinks crossroad means, the term crossroads being at the crossroads means you're at war with each other, not a choice point, which is, at least means here. Uh, but then he brings up the United Nations and how this guy quoted Kofi Annan and the former, the present guy in charge of the United Nations. And, you know, he's brought in all these organizations that have huge issues. And if he's saying that everyone needs to be good at their practice or their, what they're doing, well, people aren't doing that Saj Mark or heartfulness. And so you expect to get everyone out there to do their... I mean, it's just stupid, right? These things have failed. All these pre-existing organizations have failed. That's why Saj Marg was brought in. And now you're doing the same thing to Saj Marg that caused the failure in these other religious traditions. And anybody with half a brain could see it. I mean, it's obvious. Like, he's, you know, he's wrecked Saj Mark. <laughs> I mean, the same way these other organizations were wrecked by people like him. And, you know, looking for external validation, looking to put his stamp on it, looking to be somebody. Instead of getting out of the way and allowing the beauty of the system and the divinity of the system work. And, you know, the failure is painful to watch. He's just, you know, floundering again. He said the problem with these organizations is that each one of them thinks that they're greater because of doing the organization, but that's what you should do. You should do the organization. You should do this, the practice that you think is the best, right? And he's lying because I know that, you know, we've seen him try to pilfer people from these other organizations. He does this every time. He tried to do it with Tuktuji when he said Tuktuji merged in him. He's always trying to recruit other people and, you know, he's not doing it, right? He's trying to poach other people from organizations. And you must think yours is greater. But then he gets into that quote. He always says, I've never heard Babaji say, that Babaji says, you know, think yourself as great, but just think about the other being greater. He always, <laughs> it's like one of his go-to lines that I don't remember Babaji ever saying. I don't know where that came from. But even if he did, Dodgy's lying because he does think he's greater. He wouldn't be pushing the brighter mind scam and doing these things. He wouldn't be invoking the 16 points. He's saying there were seven chakras, but Lalaji discovered these extra chakras, you know, the yatra points. And 
he wouldn't be saying things like that. You know, it's something that differentiates Saj Marg from these other traditions. And Tony Nader, who's on the stage with him, on the DS, dais, he gave his talk. They have a description in their website what their meditation offers that other systems don't offer, like a, a compare and, you know, why you should do theirs and not do your own. And that's, you know, it's all this stuff, right? It's competitive, right? It's all these things. But anyways, um, he wraps it up with him saying, whatever puja you're doing, whatever deity you're doing, like doing in front of stone statue. And I just happened to read that before I even knew he said this. So he's saying, you know, if you're doing your worship, your rituals, you're doing your puja to your, your gods or goddesses, all the stuff that Babaji said creates solidity. He said, do it with an open heart. Like, what are you talking about? You know, this is, I mean, just... <laughs> All right, so I got one more thing to do. I'm going to leave this voiceover open. I'm going to wait. This thing's ending up. They're doing some uh, more dancing and singing, and then they're going to boost the numbers. It's now down to 2,000 people watching live, and so there's only one or two people. There's one waiting for the next one and eight people waiting. So around the world, there's only one person waiting to see with an open browser with the video up. It might be me. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's me or not. And there's eight people watching the other ones and, you know, waiting for the other ones. So that's not, you know, it's a fail, right? It's just admit you're failing. You failed with brighter minds and you're turning Saj Marg into everything that Babaji said it shouldn't be, right? You know, so it had a big jump to 54,000, right? It went from 3,000 to 2,000 people watching it live to 54,000 right and again there's nobody waiting for the next ones and you know this was the big talk by Dodgy was trying to sell himself in some really non-existent vision of all these organizations and religions and spiritual organizations and the UN whatever else working together for what right like people aren't listening to you now in your own organization you've lost people because of your performance and the way that you've treated your former master and the scams you're involved in. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. Is there anything more to say about it? It's just a joke. And these people, you know, these these Irish women who um, came and were like sort of semi-attacking me, saying how great this was, and these people posting this on Facebook, you know, it's, come on. Like, there has to be a, when you're going to do something. You know, Chargy once said, you can't just throw a hammer and call it work, right? You just can't throw a tool and hit the wall and say that's working with the tool, right? You have to actually apply it to something. And so if you're going to bring all these groups together, there has to be goals, there has to be an agenda, there has to be a next step forward, and how does that manifest into change, right? And so when you go to a gathering when it's Master Chargy's birthday, which he's canceled, you absorb the transmission. And if it stays pure, the gathering, you get transmitted to and you're cleaned out. And you leave and you're just radiating this energy. And if it's 30,000 people worldwide, you return to your countries, you know, you come back from India to America and you go into your you know, place of work and you're interacting with friends and family. And this divine energy radiates off of you, right? And you know, that's how that works. And it works. Like, it, we've experienced it. So many of us have experienced it. Not just we ourselves getting a boost, but, you know, just our performance. I remember one time I was driving home from Satsan, and it was sort of the end of my playing basketball days. I was 29, and, you know, I wasn't going to parks and playing, you know, outdoor pickup basketball. But I went there, and I decided to play. I was driving by this park, and it was a good, you know, competition there. A lot of people from players from UMass. And... You know, um, it was one of my best basketball performances. I just, like I said, came from Satson, and I slowed down. You know, when they they talk about that when someone comes in as a as a rookie and they play, and eventually the game is it slows down for them, right? They come in and the you know the athletes are at a different level and the speed of the game, but you know the game slows down and they're able to be comfortable. And I just was playing on a level that I had never played before because of the the way that the Sajmark system, it just brings out the best of you, the transmission, the cleaning and things. And I've experienced that in a lot of different levels. Certainly doing what I do here is enhanced by my practice. 
And so that's how Sajmar brings about change. It works internally and not through lectures and talks. I mean, think about the amount of information that's there on the internet. And how many times does a person listen to and change their beliefs or their perspective? And there's a joke by um, Brian Regan. He said that some historic event happened yesterday on the internet. Somebody with a strong political position gave their opinion and somebody with the opposite beliefs and position actually said, you know, you're right. <laughs> like it doesn't happen. People don't change from listening to people. I mean, you could just see people tuning out in the audience and not listening to these various presenters. Many of them weren't good public speakers, certainly dodgy isn't. And so there's no avenue for change. Talk and, you know, I mean, the UN would be changing things left and right if there was, if certainly they don't really want to, but, you know, they just go there and everyone gives their opinion. Nobody listens to each other. And we see this in political debates. People come in with predetermined beliefs and predetermined um, handlers and, you know, people that they're working for and businesses and agendas. And Daji has an agenda here and it's going to fail because he thinks he can poach people out of these other spiritual organizations. It isn't going to happen. There might be some people who like the ashram and realize they can go to the ashram for these gatherings and get like a free vacation and a, a place that's better than they live, you know, it's a, uh, I mean, that's happening a lot there. And a lot of the people there are going for a little, um, you know, vacation, sort of semi-spiritual gathering. But they're not there because they're good abiyasis or they can feel the transmission. And so, you know, it just doesn't work. It hasn't worked in the past and it's not going to work now. Um, so anyways, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Uh, I might come back. There's two more things that are going to be, I don't, you know, I'm just scanning through them and I mean, I, I suffered through that one dodgy speech, and I don't know if he's going to do another one, but it's just they're running all these people through the program, and Sadhguru was supposed to show up, and he didn't. Some of these people they said they were going to show up didn't. You know, it seems like there was a, a no-show. You know, people would know more there. I mean, certainly the diaper Baba thing and him being left out. I mean, all of that, right? And so, um, you know, he fails because he's, not sticking to the principles and teaching the Saj Mark system. And numbers of people don't equate success or growth in the Saj Mark system. It's always been about quality rather than quantity, but he doesn't have either. And they have to embellish their numbers. I mean, to jump from 3,000 people watching to 54,000, and there's four comments, right? <laughs> there's four measly comments. Maybe there'll be more and, you know, they'll get up to 10 or something. And the comments are, you know, not substantive, you know, like they always are. You know, my son was telling me that there's these streamers, you know, these video game streamers, they stream their video game play. And some of the top streamers, uh, one of the, um, the websites or one of the applications that provide live bot views went down and none of those people stream that whole day. Like they all canceled, they all called in sick because they're all buying bot views and pretending they have more views than they actually have, right? And so it's a very common practice and it doesn't suit a spiritual organization. And it shows you that you know you're failing because if you have to embellish your numbers, then you know your numbers aren't good, right? You know that you're not doing what you're supposed to do. But anyways, um, you know, that's it for now. Okay, um, greetings brothers and sisters. So this is going to be a video which will be a part of my journey series as well as a standalone audio today about the last two sessions of the Kultastav. The one session, the, um, the second to last session was a morning meditation that was done by, I'm not sorry, a morning uh, yoga session that got 7,000 views, right? <laughs> um, and so... Um, you know, and, and the thing really just got goofy, the, the last one, which I'll get to in a moment. But what happened is, um, thankfully, the dodgy truther sent me this because I wouldn't have found it. But there were some closing remarks where the some guy thanks the overall participants or volunteers at Kana, the people who live there, to, for pulling this event off, this big successful event. And then he says it, you know, we had over 50,000 people. So at the very most, if you believe the numbers on YouTube, there is maybe 100,000 views on one video. And that's if nobody at the gathering watched it. And, I, you know, these are 
to me, fabricated numbers. I mean, I could look at the actual, you know, Hartfulist website. But the majority of people who participated are Abiasis. You know, the, the view count is whatever that is. That's not accurate. And the last day got 55,000 views. They're saying, but only 10 comments, right? And so what's up with that, right? <laughs> like, so, like all these events. But it's not more than would be on a... Babaji or Charaji or Lalaji birthday or even Daji's birthday gatherings. I mean, that's what you would get, probably some thousands of people. And I don't know, 50,000 might be inflated. But remember, they said they were going to get millions of participants. But what they always count on is bringing audience in from these other organizations. Now, political leaders don't bring an audience with them. I mean, somebody like Trump, sure. Somebody who's got sort of like a cult-like status. But political leaders usually don't have a big fan base that they bring with them. And so they show up at big venues expecting you to bring the audience, right? And so they've had all these political leaders. One guy kind of stuck around through the whole thing. And they had this woman, Patricia Scotland, in there, uh, who is the head of the Commonwealth of uh, British Commonwealth, right? And she was one of the people in that original, uh, you know, Dodgy did a. Uh, Faraji did a Brighter Minds scam uh, thing that he did, and they were talked about this event. And she gave Dodgy a, I think they called it, she bestowed on him the title of Global Ambassador to Peace Building and Faith. And so he got another award. This is from the British Commonwealth that has done nothing about peace building. The British Commonwealth, you know, they said at one time, I mean, this is what the Commonwealth represents, the the 50-so-odd nations of countries that Britain conquered. And when they conquered all these countries, including India, in a brutal fashion, you know, they were, it was colonization, right? They're the big colonizers. When people talk about colonizers, and this is a woman of color who lives in a an island somewhere, one of the Ghana or one of these islands that Britain conquered. And they used to say that the sun never sets on the British Empire. And what Britain did to India was pretty savage. And, you know, it affected the Indian culture, all these things, right? Which, you know, luckily for me and some of you, you know, all of us who do uh, Gratefulness Meditation Saj Marg, that English language was brought to the country, which helped us, you know, there's good things that came out of it, but not because Britain was good. And not because they're about peace and, you know, uh, uh, faith. And, you know, they have their own crappy religion over there and uh, where the king and the queen or the, you know, the sovereign is the, the head of a church, right? Just all of it. And all the things they did with crusades on top of it. You know, Britain is responsible. I mean, America is an extension of the British rule. Now, America is the dominant force. Britain, Britain's, uh, you know, Britain is the financial center and America is the military center. And, you know... For them to talk about peace, I mean, to get an award from those guys, right? <laughs> of peace and, you know, faith is just a joke. Like, you can call anything successful. So there is one video that got 120,000 views, and it has nothing to do with Dodgy. It is, again, I'm not saying the views are accurate. It's the morning yoga and meditation, and it is, um, you know, they had the big one where they... These, the uh, the woman was there the the um, you know the the president of India and that got 108,000 views but the next day there was one that got 121,000 views and that one um, some woman does a yoga and a guided meditation that is not size mark and it only has two comments it's got 121,000 views and two comments um and the, there's actually a few more comments there, but they say they only have two. They have about ten. And, you know, it's not anything to do with Saj Mark. And so before Patricia Scotland bestowed this award on Fraji, he gave, or somebody gave, a 22-minute sitting, something like that. It was under 25 minutes in the guided meditation part. And so they did one satsang. So... They're calling this a success, and this is the thing that I've said. They just can call anything a success. They can pretend anything is a success. 
because it's how you define something as a success. But this was clearly a failure. The dodgy truther said that, you know, he didn't see any of the bigwigs there. And Diaper Baba didn't show. And I think Diaper Baba was disinvited because, you know, he comes all the time to these things. He was supposed to lead the yoga in the morning. So either he didn't show because it was, it was, it was going to be a failure or they disinvited him. And then these other guys, of course, Sadhguru, gave just a congratulations to Daji in a, a two-minute video they sent. I mean, this is, you know, the big organizations that would have brought more people and more, you know, prestige to this event weren't there. There's just a lot of people with weird hairdos and face paint and, you know, nondescript people and just ever see of each person getting their, you know, 15 minutes of fame on this thing, right? People like, you know, you have all these organizations, but how many people do these organizations have in them? And then there was the political leaders that are doing all the speaking on the final day. And so the this guy is some kind of, uh, you know, there's some, I don't know if he's a, a minister or, uh, you know, a minister, a governmental minister of something, minister of culture, or he's some kind of, he's a politician. And he was here the last two days. And then they had the president of India there that was there that one day. And then Patricia Scotland, who's the head of, the British Commonwealth, who nobody even knows who that is, right? And, you know, and the British Commonwealth is under fire now with, you know, all this stuff about the idea of colonists, like people who are colonizers. And so, you know, it's just a mess, right? And it's a clear failure. Only 50,000 people there. And that's, you know, they wouldn't, they said millions were going to participate globally. And the most they can say is there's 121,000 views again in a video that has like 10 comments on it and it has nothing to do with Saj Marg it's somebody doing Hatha Yoga and then doing a Hatha Yoga meditation where everyone's laying on a mat and they're calling that a meditation and so at a gathering for Charji's birthday you know again how many people are out of the 50,000 are Abiyasis uh, probably at least 30 or more I mean how many newcomers are there actually there it didn't look like 50,000 because there's some empty space in the back. And so, you know, they were able to do yoga in the big meditation hall where everyone needed more space. So I don't even think they got that. I think they're just exaggerating the numbers. They always exaggerate. And so, you know, but even at 50,000, it's a complete failure. And only one sitting. You know, the, the big thing that Saj Mark has to offer is the transmission and the cleaning. And this is going to be the big event. Daji wants to do this every year. And we'll know if it's a failure if they don't do it again next year. Because Daji already said he wanted to do it every year. And yet he doesn't want to celebrate Charji's birthday where there's be, you know, I mean, there's 30,000 people when he canceled it. Like showed up the first year last year. And he gave five sh short sittings and pouted. And, you know, I mean, it's a complete failure because transmission and cleaning are what Sajmarg has to offer. And you didn't even present that. You gave him one sitting that was only 20 minutes long to people who are mostly Abiyasis and could have just stayed at home and, and done the one sitting and, you know, it's, I mean, it's saved their money. Like, he didn't want people to travel. It's a bit too much, right? I mean, it's, you know. Okay, so I dictated this message, um, not message, this um, part of his, you know, his last passant. He claimed that, well, this is what he said. We have been celebrating four Bandars per year. You are e easily spending 40 to five days if you have to attend four bandaras and on top of it, that you make additional visits now and then to Kana, it is a bit too much. <laughs> I've been pondering over it during the lifetime of our sister, Helen Pere. I would request her to communicate to Babaji Maharaj and say, what to do, there will be hundreds of masters should we celebrate each birthday separately. 400 days and you don't have 400, 400 days and you don't have 400 days in a year. You know, this is ridiculous, right? Because now there's four. <laughs> you know, I, I calculated, I think, at 10,000 years, if each master had 25 years of being a master, something like that, um, that before this would be an actual problem. So, like, they can let the next guy worry about it, right? Babaji took a long time answering, and he answered, he will get the answer at the right time, and the answer did came a few weeks back. He said, divide the year into two, six months from January to June, and 1st of July to 30th or 31st on December. Um, 
so he didn't understand how many days are in December, which he probably should have thought ahead of time. Now, the interesting things here, and again, I just covered this in a recent you know video, um, but he first is begging the French woman, Helene Perret, the medium, to give him a whispers message. And there was a whispers message which I read, you know, in this um, last video that I did on this, where he, um, Babaji says that these four days have to be honored and that has to go on forever. Like he made it clear in the whispers. So he already gave a whispers message answering this on Charji's birthday in 2000, the, the day before Charji's birthday, the 23rd of J July uh, in 2015 was the message. And there's other messages saying this that the Bandara days are sacred and holy and they shouldn't be tampered with. So Babaji, he didn't need to ask Babaji for another message because Babaji already gave him one. But then she dies and all of a sudden Daji is channeling Babaji, which why wasn't he channeling Babaji before? Like there can be more than one medium. He is the master after all. So he would need to go. And he said in a, you know, this speech, which he was crapping all over Charji's legacy when he was announcing Charji's final resting place, he said that the masters, the divine hierarchy, were preparing him, and Charji didn't even know about it. And later on in another speech, he would say, from above they can do nothing, only the living master can do anything. So he contradicted himself. But he said that in secret, that Charji wasn't even knowing what was going on with Daji. And so was he intercommuning them then, when he was uh, you know, in Manapakam, at the ashram there in, in uh, Chennai? And so he's just a liar, right? He, these things don't add up. And now he's saying, claiming he's getting messages. And then he says, whoever's born the 30th is master, which is a t kind of a gaffe he made. It's not, that, that, that sentence doesn't make sense, but I copied this verbatim. We will celebrate all of those birthdays before 30th of June on Basant Panchami. And later he added, whoever is born before 1st of July and the end of the year, the 28th of September, I remarked Babaji Maharaj. Why not later on, if the living master is in the segment, it will be appropriate? Meaning, if the living master was in the back half of the year, why would not celebrate on the living master's birthday and not Daji's birthday? And he, and he said, no, there are many reasons which you will understand that these two dates are important, but signed on 28th of September. I did not argue. It is not my habit to argue. And I said, yes, Babaji, it will be done. So this is what I wanted to share with you. Please follow it up. You know, it's just a fraud. Like, he's a complete fraud. Um, and he's saying that it's a bit too much to have four birthdays a year, and yet he wants to add this Mahastav where there's only one sitting. <laughs> Given the whole time, it's 20 minutes long. Transmission is what's going to transform the world, according to Babaji. And there wasn't a lot of new people that came in there, right? Because Charji's birthday, they had 30,000 after this was you know, last year in 2023 at Basan, he reads this, you know, he gives this statement and then people show up to Babaji's birthday anyway. And then Charji's, there's like 30,000 or more that show up, even though uh, Daji said don't come because he said it would just be for local people in the local area. But these people came from everywhere because they weren't listening to the guy. They didn't believe him. And the same thing when he said that he was, you know, merged with Tuktuji. He just lies about stuff. That happens internally and he pouted for five you know i mean the five satsons he gave and all this stuff and that would actually help transform the world because it's about meditation and, and cleaning and transmission and these things it's about actual sajmarg activity which is the you know the the transmission and the essence of this divine energy the pranahuti that's supposed to transform human beings and bring them up to a higher level of consciousness which daji is backing away from but this thing is an epic failure, the, the Ma stuff. And we'll see if they don't have it next year, they're admitting that it didn't go as planned. And you could feel it was very low energy because they have, you know, the bigger guys are gone. Um, the biggest guy they had is Tony Nader, who has transcendental meditation. And I think he, they brought some of those people there. Transcendental meditation is a, it's worth a $3 billion, um, you know, business. And they have celebrities and things that do it. But it's definitely competitive because it's a meditation and it's for profit. It's a business. And, you know, whatever relationship that Daji's hoping to form with them and whatever he's trying to poach from them, 
probably isn't going to happen, right? And even if he poaches some people from that, you know, I mean, it's the wrong way to go about this, right? So this is an epic failure that they call, they're calling a success. They underperformed in terms of the people that attended, and they inflated the numbers of people who watched it online. And so in a country that has like 1.4 billion people, they couldn't get, you know, uh, if you believe the numbers, 150,000 people to attend with all these organizations. And the next one will be harder because people aren't going to want to be a part of a failure. So they won't even get the politicians. And so on the final day, Dodgy gives a sitting and Patricia Scotland gives a talk. And then this other guy gives a talk, this you know politician, other politician. So it's become a political event because they want access to this audience who is, you know, a heartfulness audience you know, that are, are there. It's mostly them. And so the thing's a joke, right? And it doesn't deliver and it's full of hypocrisy and fraudulent behavior and getting rid of the one precious thing that can actually change the world, which is transmission. So they give them a big standing of ovation and there doesn't seem to be that much clapping. And they show only a portion of the audience, like the male side of the audience. And so hopefully like, there might be some, this pan, you know, a, a view of the few, full audience, which they always like to do. In fact, they, they would let people sit on the floor and that one, you know, they wouldn't let people sit in chairs on the floor of the meditation hall, even though it was, you know, quite empty. Most people are in the auxiliary buildings, um, but they were kicking us out. Remember that one gathering I talked about when 2020, which was, uh, you know, they were just kicking people out because they wanted a good drone shot of all the people that were there. But there didn't seem to be a drone shot of all the people that are there. So I bet they didn't even fill the big meditation hall. I bet there's not even 20,000 people there. You know, like whatever it is, you know, 50,000 people doesn't fill the big meditation hall. So, I mean, even that. And then there's the, you know, the auxiliary buildings. And so, I mean, there's, it's an epic failure and they give them this award. You know, Dodgy gets another one of these bogus awards, participation awards that don't mean anything. And they can call it a success, but, you know, it's, you know, what I referred to it earlier. It's just this kind of circle jerk type of thing where they bring in all these people and they all get, you know, their, their moment of whatever it is. They can claim it's a great event and call it a success because they're PR people, right? They're not, it's not legitimate, but there's no success here, right? This is everything that Saj Marg wasn't supposed to become. And you can tell it's a fake because of the um, secretary general or whatever it is, the secretary, uh, the head of the Commonwealth and the guy who's the politician that's still there, whatever he is, and Duji sit there and they do multiple photo ops with the guy in the middle holding the certificate and Dodgy holding the award, all these things, right? And because that's going to be on the front page of papers, you know, pretending that this is a real success because nobody knows any different. And it's a promotional event and a photo opportunity. They had the photo opportunity with the president, with all the people, the people on the stage. Most of those people have left and they've got new people who, you know, they weren't the heavy hitters and the big names that they promised. And now it's just like, you know, it's an embarrassment, right? 50,000 people is, you know, maximum. I mean, they're not going to underestimate that. And the, me the meditation hall holds, holds over 60 or something thousand people. And they're not showing you the full picture of the audience. So that means it's dissipated. So either people have left or there wasn't 50,000 people in the first place. And the things are going to look empty. There's probably nobody in the auxiliary buildings. And so this is a small gathering compared to some of the things that we've had with the masters of the system. And so, you know, Chargy brought in 80,000 people for his birthday years and years ago, like 20 years ago. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> you know, whatever it is, it's, it was like 80 something thousand people. And so unless they were exaggerating that, because who knows how long they've been fudging the numbers. Chargy was meticulous about that, but those were real gatherings with real spiritual benefit that had global implications just from the the energy and the condition that was the vibrations that was released there. Okay, so the politician guy is the vice president of India, so I don't even know where that stands in the hierarchy. There's the prime minister who's the big guy, and he didn't show. He's a no-show. Dodgy really wanted to get him, according to the Dodgy truther, when he first tried this, but he couldn't get anybody to participate. He couldn't get the big names. So he, you know, he was going to do this. If we're going to do a timeline of this fraud and failure... 
they originally said this was going to happen um, for the 130th anniversary of Swami Vivekananda, who isn't really celebrated. Like, there's maybe people talking about Swami Vivekananda in these individual talks. And, you know, it's, people could drone, listen to these guys drone on and sit through it. But it wasn't really a big Swami Vivekananda thing. That was just an excuse. But his actual day of his speech was the 19th of September, which would really put a damper on Daji's 28th of September birthday. And so he moved the event to August, which would be was like August 5th or something. Some, you know, one of these event days that was closer to Charji's birthday, which he was planning to cancel. But that didn't go off because these guys didn't, you know, do the, they didn't want to do the gathering. They didn't want to do it. So he canceled. And then he tried it again now. He could get some of these big name politicians. And, you know, this guy comes up, the vice president and says, it's not a surprise that Dodgy got this award. Like the award means something, right? They're just made up. It's a made up thing by a, you know, a brutal, violent government and, you know, history in the British Commonwealth of colonizers, right? And the UN was there. I mean, all this political crap and stuff that's, that was never supposed to be about Saj Mart. You know, why didn't Dodgy do some of these things while Chargy was still alive? Why didn't he try some of this shit when Chargy was still alive, right? Because he couldn't, because, like, it would have been, Chargy would be like, no, this is wrong. You're not supposed to be doing this, right? And so he waited till, you know, he could get away with it, and he compromised enough people like that, you know, message I got from that Abiyasi who says that Dodgy's making everybody a full preceptor, and he gives all these people their little moments of fame you know they have their own little platforms and they are compromised in some way and they think that you know she said that she got a sitting from somebody who said he invoked krishna you know to come down and give her an individual sitting you know it's just goofy they're making up stuff the preceptors can't really give sittings there's no transmission left and the whole thing is a hollow shell and it's just become something where it's all pr and you know they're just saying it's great when it isn't right it's just a failure and politicians don't make this thing better it makes it worse right and then there's all the security that goes with having these politicians and so i don't think he'll get the politicians like he'll get uh, you know somebody else that's lower ranking next time and we'll see we'll see if he does it again but if he doesn't do it again then this was a failure like this is something that just another thing that he tried that failed and if he does do it again it's going to be you know worse the next time and the best it can ever be is they get bigger celebrities, bigger politicians, and they do, you know, bigger performers. And that's probably not going to happen. But if even if it does, that it does, that's just more of a failure because it isn't going to get more spiritual. It isn't going to be more like a gathering where you're celebrating the birthdays of one of the masters. The condition isn't going to be spiritual. It's going to be mucked up by all these, um, you know, various things that they're bringing in there, right? These activities. Okay, so I'm suffering through Dodgy's talk now. And he said the award doesn't belong to him, it belongs to Harfleet. <laughs> um, and, you know, I know he mentioned the Brighter Mind scam. I don't know if he, he might mention it again. I don't know if he rolled out uh, a demonstration. I didn't see one. But this thing is an epic failure, even by their standards, because he was going to get the award no matter what. Like, it's a bogus award. It's like just you know, going to Mr. Trophy and pulling out a trophy or getting some kind of award. It doesn't signify anything, right? It's an institution that wants to tie itself. The British Commonwealth has nothing to lose unless Dodgy embarrasses them. And, you know, they have accepted the Brighter Mind scam as being something that, you know, has now been legitimized by Fraudy and his whatever political success, being able to get 50,000 people or so at the gathering. So on this day, they're only showing partial audience, which means the majority of people left. There's only 50,000 people who viewed the video on YouTube, according to their numbers, right? You know, I'm pretty sure that these are bot views. I don't know what else they could be, right? So I looked at that one day that the president of India came to the, to whatever it was, right? The gathering thing. And there was a picture of the audience that showed that the hall was almost full you could see that there's maybe a little space in the back so 
you know, 50,000 people would probably be uh, an okay estimate. But you get that same, you know, amount of people. Because the people can be more spread out, too, when you have a gathering with one of the masters of the system. And even, even if it isn't a big gathering that they're promoting. In fact, Dodgy is, um, you know, they've been promoting this as some global event. And when you say that it's going to be a million plus participants and you fail, that means it's a failure, even by your own standards. Because if you think a million plus is what you should get and you get less than that, so the most that they get here is some 50,000 people that attend. But on the last day, they're not even showing you the whole audience, so a lot of people have left already. And that's the day that they're going to give the one sats on at least I could tell that the one sats on they gave during the whole gathering. And so it was the only time those people could experience transmission if some of those people were new people. But either way, if people leave before the last sitting that's or the last you know day, that's bad. Like that's, you know, if you're the final performer on a concert like Woodstock, like Jimi Hendrix was when it, it was all flooded and rained out and everyone was leaving because it was a, like it was a crisis zone, right? <laughs> like they had to bring in the National Guard place was a mess and you know all these things and he's playing guitar to almost an empty venue right so it's got to be considered a failure if they're not staying for the last one it's also a failure if your view count drops from a hundred thousand to fifty thousand and so if they're going to count up each day and say well we got a hundred thousand views here a hundred thousand views there they're still not making it to a million and you know these are not people who why it's about it's about watch time as well like YouTube success is how much you can get people to watch your videos. If people turn it on for a few minutes, you know, whatever it is, I mean, there was just some thousands of people, like 6,000, 5,000 people watching at a time at these, you know, live events. And then later on they said, well, they got 100,000. Well, only if a lot of people started watching and left, and of course they would because... Who wants to listen to eight hours of politicians and spiritual leaders you've never heard of drone on endlessly and then have all this, you know, musical stuff, especially if it's, you know, if it's outside of India, Indian music, Indian dance and talks by boring people about things that are, you know, accents you can't understand. And I mean, for people outside of India, but even in India, people with various face paints and, you know, all these weird uh, beards and you know, there's like a lot of weird beards and a lot of weird dress and things like this nobody likes to listen to lectures I mean this thing it was highlighted by all these important people getting their 15 minutes or spiritual leaders and politicians getting their 15 minutes of airtime and you sitting uncomfortably there and you know the hot whatever it is there in terms of the the weather I mean it's one of the probably better times of the year there, but it's probably 80 plus degrees. And listening to people talk for eight hours or whatever it is, four hours, and these various, you know, and then whatever else is going on while you're at the gathering, just being in a big crowd of people of what they're saying is 50,000 and getting meals and sleeping, you know, in these big tents and whatever they're doing for accommodations. And for what? So you can listen to people give talks and speeches. I mean, it's just the same old rhetoric. And if you're at home, you're not gonna you're not gonna listen to this stuff. You'll fast forward and you watch. The majority of people will be heartfulness people. They may watch Dodgy's speech, but they don't watch his speeches regularly. They don't watch his YouTube channel videos regularly. And so, watch time has got to be low. I mean, you'd have to be really a a sad person, a sad sack person, to sit through all this stuff when you can just scan through it. And so, whatever views they got aren't real views. And so, you know, at best you, you're saying there's 150,000 people that participated. And that's, you know, a generous, I mean, whatever they, they're claiming, the 50,000 at the, the gathering. And then the maybe 100,000 people that, you know, watched the, the one of the videos. And they're not new people in each video, like I said. So, you know, it's an epic failure. You came, you know, one-tenth of your expected population of participants. But then you're going to call it a success? I mean, you know, and we'll see, again, if he does it again, at least they'll be thinking they're getting something out of it. It's It'll be a failure no matter what because it's not like a gathering, a birthday gathering. 
Chargie's birthday should be celebrated. They're not celebrating that, right? At least he's trying not to. But people are showing up for that anyway. And it's just, you know, it's a, uh, I mean, <laughs> having people give lectures isn't a success. And having people watch for a few minutes on the internet and go, oh, this is boring, and turn it off isn't a success, right? It isn't going to bring in new people. Only It's only going to be a political, you know, a PR stunt, a photo opportunity for something that's, I mean, failing on every level, on every level. Then he thanks the divine hierarchy of masters. For him, you know, for us, that would be Babaji, Charji, and Lalaji. But for him, it's all these other people, and not Charji and Tuktuji. <laughs> he wrote on this list, this piece of paper letter that to the Tuktuji people that he's not even mentioning. I don't think they even showed up. I don't think their, their you know, whatever leadership showed up. Then he thanks the transcendental meditation people and all the people that came with him. Now, Tony Nader isn't there anymore. He's left. He's not on stage as far as I can tell. And so he's the big guy. Like, he's the big name. He wasn't present on the stage the first day. He came and gave a talk on the second day. You know, he was, I mean, he was the most prominent person. And transcendental meditation, I don't know how many people do it globally, but it's a business, right? And he's calling this a global event, but, you know, nobody outside of India is going to watch this stuff. I mean, very few people. You'd have to be familiar with the Indian culture or an Abiyasi, and new people aren't going to look at this thing, right? I mean, people maybe do some of the other, like some transcendental meditation, people might check it out for a little bit, but they're not going to be, you know, it's it's boring, right? It's a failure. And, you know, I mean, it's classic defraji. But then he boasts about 300 plus organizations. Now, when somebody, like he didn't recognize the ones that didn't show, the leadership. And so if he's counting those organizations amongst them, but the organization might have 100 people. It might have 2,000 people. You know, people who didn't get to get on the dais, right? They only let so many people on the stage. And so it's under 50 people total. I mean, a lot of those people are politicians. So a lot of these 300 plus organizations, the leader might have been there, but they, other than getting a photo with somebody and saying they were there, they're not getting much run. They might, you know, there's so many people got to, to do some brief speeches. I don't know if it was 300 different people, probably less. And so some of these guys, you know, they're not, I mean, the only one he acknowledged was one organization, right? Transcendental Meditation. So that was the only big organization and that's a competition because they, on their website, they tell you how, what transcendental meditation will do for you that other meditation practices won't. Like it's a compare and, uh, you know, this is what we give you and it's better than anything else anybody else gives you, right? And so, you know, again, it's just, um, if you look into it, you look beyond the facade, beyond the promotional speak, you see that it's a failure even by their own standards even by their own superficial, non-spiritual standards, it's a failure. Then he says, gods and angels will descend on this event and say, look at this. Look at this is created. Humanity has created heaven, right? They're, they're, he's attributing this gathering to be in a heavenly event, which you can say about a gathering for the birthdays of the masters of the system was solely focused on transmission, not endless droning on of people. I mean, it's what Babaji said in some of these excerpts I read from Reality at Dawn what Babaji said about these people droning on and you know their own contaminating the atmosphere with their own their own gross vibrations I mean some of these organizations are certainly fraudulent I mean Diaper Baba is a fraud right he's been you know convicted or at least the court case is ruling against him where he's been uh, convicted of fraud and he had to pay all these fines and things and then other things that he's done right it's a mess like it's just it's calling something that's a piece of crap divine in heaven right <laughs> you know that's something that goes away from the fundamental teaching to your organization and what did you get nothing you didn't change anything you didn't bring people in you didn't bring awareness to massive amount of people around the globe you had a little party with a bunch of politicians and some you know performers and it was probably pretty boring and sucky for the people that are there and you gave one city right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's a failure bro then he says is it too much I don't think so right <laughs> what, what is too much right 
to do the meditation, to bring in all these organizations for something that, you know, these organizations aren't going to fold into one. It's impossible because they have different belief systems, different leadership, different, you know, bylaws and things that they're established organizations that aren't going to merge into, you know, heartfulness like he wants. And so he wants to be recognized as the leader of all these pseudo organizations and no one's given him that, right? He doesn't have the charisma to pull that off. And even if he did, it's the wrong path to growth of the heartfulness system. And, you know, just like it's a bad decision, like the Brighter Mind scam is. Well, mercifully, he didn't have much to say because I didn't want to suffer through it. But he said, he ended it with, may we pray that this Mother Earth become a heaven. And, you know, this isn't, at very least, this is a, a small Indian gathering, <laughs> you know, by any standard when you're talking about over 1.4 billion people there and you get 100,000, you know, 150,000 generously, you know, participating. It's not it's going to change the world. It's not any of those things, right? And it isn't. there isn't a pathway to change the world because lectures and speeches, if that would have changed the world, then the politicians would have already done that, right? Political speeches and fraudulent spiritual organizations, leaders getting up there and pontificating and droning on endlessly, if that was enough. I mean, just all the people doing what I do here on YouTube or some sort of social media platforms and all the podcasts and all the things where people are talking about whatever, why isn't the world changing for the better, right? Because it's not part of Babaji's plan. Babaji's plan was take down the current system. The current system, the future system, will be built on the bones and ashes of the current system. So you're trying to save that system goes against Babaji's teachings and his prophecies. And it goes against the, the essence of the Sajmark system that says... It should never be political. Keep politics out of it. And now you're letting politics run it and using politics and po politicians to give it importance that it doesn't deserve. So they clear off the dais. I think Dodgy disappears. They do some you know, music there. And all these dignitaries leave. Tony Nader's, they showed a seat with Tony Nader's name on it. But it didn't appear that he was there. But even if he was, you know, what difference does that make? But if he left early... And he smelled a rat. Like, you know, the ending of this thing, there's a guy that used to, uh, I used to be friends with who I knew, American guy, who was um, an Abiyasi. And he would ask people on Facebook a question about something going on in the world and, and ask their opinions about it. And everyone would, you know, he'd get so many people voicing their opinion, like he got me one time. You know, this is before I, my YouTube channel took off and things like this, right? But I, you know, was coming from a truth or perspective and I gave an opinion. And then he would, after everyone gave their opinion, he'd say, thanks for your opinions. And then he would tell everyone what he thought. You know, he was holding these people hostage so that they would listen to his opinion on things. It was clear manipulation. I don't know if he actually read the other opinions or not, but he clearly wanted everyone to think about his and his was often goofy. Like it was, he was liberal and he was, you know, I mean, he was an American, you know, liberal, whatever it was. A smart guy, but very mental and probably not very heart based, even though he did Saj Mark. And so that's what this thing was like, where Dodgy brings everybody in, but then he says, well, this is a really a, a heartfulness thing, right? <laughs> even though you guys are all here, this is a really heartfulness thing. It's my thing. I'm being celebrated, I'm getting the award. You know, and you guys are just, you, you've been duped into sitting through this thing. And I bet these people won't show back up. I don't know if Tony Nader, I don't know what his, you know, how he, how he sees this as an advantage for him or his organization. And there's always self-centered interests, narcissism and things at the center of these things, right? And so then they roll out this guy who's the, the religious head of the World Economic Forum. And for you guys who are truthers, you know that these organizations are evil at their core. The World Economic Forum, they have a prediction by 2030 that you won't own anything. You know, everything will be rented. You've, you won't have home ownership. You won't own your car. Everything will be rented, even your clothes and things, and you'll love it. So what's going to, and you'll think it's a great deal. So what's going to happen between now and then that in, you know, five, six years from now that you'll rent everything living in these small um, you know, Agenda 2030 housing, amongst other 
predictions. The World Economic Forum is guiding the world. These are the people that Babaji referred to as money power and whispers of the brighter world. And they're running the world into the ground, right? These are bad people. And he's had the UN there. He has the World Economic Forum. He's got somebody who represents the evil British colonizer empire, right? And, you know, the political heads of India, this corrupt government, I mean, just the bureaucracy and the corruption there. And that's what he's moving forward as saying that this is some kind of successful merger between spirituality and these, you know, economic and, and political powerhouses, so to speak. And it's none of those things because they're not bringing anything to heartfulness. They're not bringing people, they're not bringing money, they're not bringing anything but a silly little award for a sad little man, right? <laughs> So the World Economic Forum did some kind of world religion thing to do with their with their organization. And his name is Babaji Janji. So again, another guy that has a similar name to Babaji, but is clearly not Babaji. <laughs> and so then there's a smattering of applause. It sounds like there's 20 people there. I don't know if they didn't like this guy, but everyone's leaving. Daji and the, and the, you know, the zoo crew left, the big heavy hitters left. And they aren't heavy hitters. And now they're bringing in these last sort of cleanup crew because they didn't get their airtime, and this guy's giving a talk to you know what sounds like maybe a couple hundred people they show the people leaving and so they won't give you a shot at the audience anymore because no one wants to listen to more bullshit right <laughs> like their people are you know they've reached their bullshit capacity so this world economic forum clown starts off with saying dodgy isn't here and they show the audience and it's you know a lot of empty chairs now and they show us smaller like it's a smaller shot like of just a smaller segment of the audience of, of the upfront people that are still sitting down like the, the back is emptying out and and this guy says you know what's the big he asks the audience what's the biggest um blessing that you can experience in life anybody like there's still there's nobody there with a microphone to get the audience to respond nobody says anything and he says to find a guru right and babaji would say that if it was a guru of quality because there's a lot of quacks and a lot of charlatans. I mean, these were words that Babaji used, right? And then he goes and says that you're lucky to have a guru like Daji. Not Daji, but a guru like him <laughs> you know, in your life. He talks about how he just messed, met the guy. So then this guy is the United Nations guy. When Daji said that the United Nations guy gave a quote, quote, of quote from Kofi Annan. So I guess this guy gave an earlier talk. And, you know, he talks about beating Daji and how it was like he knew him forever. They had lunch and they had you know meeting for for you know some couple of hours. Um, you know this is the UN and the World Economic Forum all rolled up into one. <laughs> and and this guy's given his dodgy and the heartfulness people his blessing. But again, it's not about any of the other organizations. It's about how great dodgy is. And this is they're rolling it out. And there's the audience is gone. Like half the seats are empty and the small. You know, the camera now is only showing you a small part of the the audience. They're all left, right? That This is an empty, you know, people are leaving. They're heading home. This thing's over. And, you know, stick a fork in it, right? So there's some guy. He's a doctor of Heart Math Institute. I don't know if that's to do with heartfulness. His name is Dr. McCready. He's, uh, you know, looks like an American guy. I haven't heard him talk yet. And as they're showing you the guy, you know, the, the stage, you can see people walking out. <laughs> I mean, lots of them, like, you know, the cameras and people are out walking by the front of the stage and leaving and all the people exiting the back. And so this is going to be an empty. These people are going to be giving talks. There's about eight of them on the stage, right? These lesser, these non heavy hitters. And they're all, you know, I mean, it's there's no interest in it, right? People are leaving. When Dodgy left, they left with them because they're mostly Abiasis and the big time politicians all the important people left, right? <laughs> I think that guy's a Joseph Chilton Pierce guy, so that, you know, he was a respected doctor who did this research about the connection between the heart and the brain. That's what the guy talked about. I don't know if he's, you know, it's, some, it's something to do with that, right? But there's empty, two empty seats on the, the dais, and then they bring up another American white guy, the two of them, and he's the guy who, you know, that talks about consciousness, right? And there's nobody there. Like, they show the audience. And the audience that's there, you know, I know that Indians have a tr trouble with the American accent. 
and I don't know how many of these people actually are fluent in English. About one third of India speaks English, but that doesn't mean they speak it well. And they speak a, an Indian version of a British English, and they really struggle with the American accent. I often found it for them, it was hard for them to understand what I was saying. It's all old people. I mean, everyone in there is old people. No young people want to sit through this crap. And so it's a bunch of old people who don't understand what's being said, smattering of applause at the end of the thing, and everyone's sort of heading for the exits. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really bad. And then they bring out a woman who was in charge of the Baha'i faith and some, you know, some, I don't know, part of that, right? So then there's an Indian um, woman, uh, an Indian dude, and a French woman that gives the last couple of talks to round it out. There's a guy who's kind of a famous French Abiyasi who um, there was a younger woman who um, Dodgy warned uh, about this guy, said he was a womanizer. So Dodgy said to this younger Abiyasi, be careful, this guy's a womanizer. And he's, <laughs> he's given the translation, right? He's someone who was, you know, kind of inside a chargey circle and um, he's, uh, you know, frame, French Abiyasi used to travel a chargey and now he's, um, Dodgy label him as a womanizer but then had no problem with him giving a translation. This guy speaks with a heavy French accent as well. And so, like, there's nobody there. This is just like, I mean, it's the janitors are coming in and cleaning up. So then um, the, the person, the woman in charge of the, you know, the, the narrator says she wants to bring out some of the heartfulness members to facilitate the speakers, which means they get a scarf and a gift bag. <laughs> they get a scarf and a gift bag that looks like a bully bag. There's like a, just a spattering of applause. Like everyone's left. There's almost nobody up on the dais. You know, the people are leaving in the audience. And they're handing out gift bags and scarves to these participants. So there's one last speaker, some guy who's a Swamiji. And they're all something G, right? They're all some kind of thing. He's secretary of some Swami something, you know, whatever, some religious spiritual thing. And she says he's going to give his, um, you know, his his take and his experience with heartfulness. He's the last speaker and he's standing there ready to give his talk and then she invites all the the people, to, the, these guys who now have their bowling bags and their, <laughs> their gift bags and their scars to take a photo op. And so the guy's left out of it because he's <laughs> ready to give his speech and there's nobody there. There's just, everyone's left. And a bunch of Abiyasi's people I know sort of fill in the empty spaces, but one of them's a younger woman who's Toad 2's daughter, like Toad 2's responsible for the some of the forestry things there. You know, my family and I stayed at his house and he sucked and his kids are neat, but they're, you know, she's a younger woman, probably in her late 20s, 30s, and they're just filling in these spots. Everyone else is left, right? It's an empty house. I mean, it's sad and pathetic. <laughs> I mean, it's really bad. So there's one last... Um, musical performance an Indian guy singing with what looked like a white guy playing some kind of sitar or something and then the woman the woman who does the you know the, the master of ceremonies job she says something about everybody holding this vibration <laughs> from this gathering the most the host of the hosts of the cult host of right um, to hold this vibration in your heart and everyone's left and there's no vibration right it's a it's a dud <laughs> and they wrap it up and it's over and it's pathetic and sad and we'll see if Doogee's going to push this out again but it's a complete failure and so then that guy comes up and does the closing comments about 50,000 people the thing I talked about earlier and it's just you know a disaster um, I looked at the comments from my first video not sure what what WAT so this is um, typed from somebody's phone not sure what you get by doing these kind of videos and our Sajmark principles to portray chosen person like this divine work is never understood. Stop this. Very disturbing name titles. <laughs> um, okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks if you, uh, you know, thanks for participating. Um, you know, uh, this is 
in terms of what I get out of it, well, nothing but doing my duty. I mean, this channel's not even monetized yet. Uh, but the work has to be done by somebody, right? The thing's a fraud. And whatever you want to say about it, it's a fraud and a cult. And, and it's just one failure after the next. And, you know, whether people want to see that or not, that's not my problem. I don't, you know, but I, I'm doing what I was made to do, which I talked about earlier in my journey series video. And I, I think in that video, I talk about it. There's a reason that this has happened and unfolded. The fact that the videos exist means that they, they're meant to exist as part of a plan. You know, my videos, just like Dodgy's failure is part of a plan as well. Or it's not, and we're all fucked, right? <laughs> And so I'll, I'll end on that note. Okay, so I actually have a few more voiceovers from my other channel videos here. One I was going to do just for this um, video here, but I decided to include it in both of the uh, videos. I made three videos on my other channel, and I'm putting the audios in all my journey series because it's just important. Um, so there's these two audios that I want to share, and then after that there is going to be... Um, you know, again, with this picture here, when there's a new picture, if you've already heard it on my other channel, then there's something new I want to share about whispers and some other scam that Dodgy's running, um, you know, whatever. Um, so here is the audio. Okay, brothers and sisters, today is Monday, March uh, 18th. It is um, the two days after the Cult of Stav with Dodgy. And I did a voiceover last night that I was going to put just in my journey series, but I'll put it at the end of this as well. Um, and so I was thinking about the, you know, this Ma stuff thing and the, all the stuff with Dodgy. And when you have a venture, when you have, you're doing a creative process, you're doing something, you're doing something out in the world, whatever it is, right? There needs to be a definition of success. If you're planting food, then the definition of success would be eating and selling f the food. Like if you're a farmer, you're going to have a crop, harvesting the crop, eating the crop or selling the crop, right? Those are the goals, that there'll be food that's consumed by people and that you'll either eat it yourself or sell it to somebody else or whatever. These are, you know, you have goals and there might be other goals like you are healthy and you, you know, like say you lose weight or you get stronger or you get more healthy by doing the physical work, right? There's other side goals and things like that, right? But then you have to get into what will you do to make that goal a reality? Are you going to use chemicals? Are you going to use Monsatan, you know, Monsanto, um, like geo, g genetically mon modified seeds and things like this? Are you going to poison the ground? Are you going to use on uh, you know on sustainable farming methods where you deplete the topsoil are you going to destroy lots of natural habitat to uh, you know whatever for animals and other things that are there that hurt the environment right what kind of machinery you're going to use and you know all of it how much poisoning of the earth are you willing to do to to meet your goal like how much are you willing to cross the line to do unethical farming practices right you know, in India, they had all these farmers that were going to commit suicide because they bought these Monsanto, they have these Monsatan seeds. And, you know, you can go see this. I mean, it's a whole thing there, right? That all these Indian farmers are, you know, suffering because Monsatan sold them these seeds and then they have to buy the chemicals to make sure the seeds work because they don't work without Monsanto. You know, it's a constant. And you can't save the seeds. You have to buy fresh seeds every year. And so... They don't know that. Many of them are illiterate. They sign these contracts and they put up their land as collateral and Monsanto was getting all this Indian land. It was like kind of crazy, you know, these poor farmers. And they ended up committing suicide, you know, for losing their farm and all of it, right? And so it was a, a tragedy wreaked on that country by, you know, Monsatan that is, you know, currently owned by Bear, right? So, you know, you have to, you have goals and what are you willing to do to make that goal work? Like, what are you willing to do to be the best athlete, the best football player, basketball player or something? Are you willing to take steroids, right? 
Are you willing to do things that, you know, hurt your physical body and, you know, things like this? Are you willing to, um, you know, cheat or whatever? I mean, like whatever ways that you could possibly cheat to win or things like that. What, what lines are you willing to cross to achieve your goal, right? And so you have to have a definition of success whenever you go into something. And then you have to have some sort of ethical and moral standards to meet that goal. Like you have to understand the lines you will or will not cross in order to achieve that goal. And so this is everything in life. And having a clear definition of success and then having clear standards and morality is an imperative in a spiritual organization because you're working with in the divine laws and divine structure. And you have to always be that kind of, you know, you have to reflect those kind of ideals and godly energy and you have to keep true to your, you know, to your faith or your system, right? And with religions, you know, you have these spiritual masters and saints that come down to impart spiritual wisdom. So they're higher developed souls that have been given uh, this work and assignment to teach the masses, humanity, about spirituality and move them higher up on the spiritual plane of existence, right? That's the goal. That should be the goal of every spiritual organization is to help people connect to God, the divinity within them and, you know, get them on the right path so they're moving forward in their next lives and these things or whatever's happening in the future. And so they come down and they don't have a big following. There's not a huge following because not so many people can embrace that. And it's very rare people that can actually embrace a spiritual path. And so these people come in and turn into a religion and they bring the things into the religion that make people want to stay. They use threats and bribes, you know, they, they do cons, they convince people that if you don't follow, like in Christianity, if you don't follow Christ, you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to hell, right? And Babaji spelled this out in Reality at Dawn, that religions exist on fear and temptation. And he was talking more about Indian religion specifically because, you know, that's what his audience was at that time. They weren't an international. But he was talking, you know, also in general about religion. And fear of something like hell and the temptation of getting something like heaven. And all religions have these teachings that if you do the religion, you're going to get such and such. And if you don't do the religion, you're going to get, you know, something bad. If you do the religion, you're getting something good. And if you don't do the religion, you're getting something bad. And they sell this message to people. And Christianity does it probably better than anybody because heaven and hell are, you know, big things. They've really sold the idea of heaven, you know, an afterlife that's guaranteed to you that you can't know about really until after you die. And then the, you know, punishment you're going to get, which is going to hell if you don't do the religion. And so that's crossing an ethical line because it's lies, right? It's not, there's no religion or spiritual um, organization that could copyright, copyright or trademark your God-given right to connect with the divinity within you. Everybody has the, not only the God-given right, but it's what you're supposed to do is connect to the divinity within you. So the systems are there to help you and you have to do the work. You can't, they can't do it for you. That's the other thing. Jesus can't die for your sins. And this is just, I'm using Christianity, but Babaji was more specific about, you know, Indian religions and the religions in that area of the world. Uh, but all of them, right? They, you know, they can't, they make promises they can't deliver on, and they cross ethical lines. And they also do things in terms of bending rules, you know, like making divorce permissible. Well, why do you do that? Well, the king, you know, in England wanted to marry women. He didn't want to kill them all the time. Who was it, you know, Henry VIII or one of those guys who ever brought in divorce? I mean, maybe it was King James, I don't know. But they didn't want to kill their wives anymore, so they wanted to get divorced. And they brought that in, made it legal. But it was not because of God. And making divorce legal made the, the Christian tradition more, uh, you know, appeal to people. And so when you start degrading your morality, you start degrading your, 
you know, your, um, your ethics and things, and you go against the will of God, because spirituality is a discipline. You know, being a spiritual person, you, you have to give up things, and you live a life of moderation. And, you know, you can make anything more appealing to people by bringing in special effects I mean, in terms of making movies. If you make a good, wholesome movie that talks about God in some way and is subtle, then you're limited, right? Um, but if you bring in drama, you make, you know, artificial drama like some reality TV show, you know, in terms of drama and the things that in, in go, go with, uh, you know, reality TV, it makes things appeal to people. It drives an audience base. If you go down to a lower level, you'll be able to get more people to do your thing, whatever it is, right? If you're willing to cross the line and engage in, you know, material complexities and unethical marketing practices and all these things, you go to a lower level, you can get more people. If you dumb down your message to the people who can't do the spiritual teachings the way they're supposed to be done, you'll get more people, right? You dumb something down, you, you bring it down to a lower level, and then you have a wider audience base of potential users of your system, right? And so crossing the ethical lines to achieve something like that is, you know, only based if that's what your goals are, right? If your goal is to um, bring in a lot of people and you say, all right, look at all the people we brought in, like I'm giving, you know, heartfulness and dodgy as an example, that the more people you bring in, the more you can say you're being successful. But if you've crossed those ethical lines and you've not stayed true to the system that you're selling to people, you create something that's not, you know, the system that you were given, like the Sajmark system, you create this parasitic cult-like organization that's called Heartfulness. You could bring in more people, but then you've lost why you're there in the first place, right? which is to connect people to the divinity within them. And so all these abiyasis who are looking at what Daji's doing as successful because they think that there is, you know, potential growth here, right? But there isn't really growth because they're not really bringing in more people. They have artificial, first of all, they have these goals of millions of people, right? And they're willing to lie about those. You know, they'll, their success to them is something that they can say, look at these celebrities. Look at the people that we have here. Look at these politicians. Look at these successful, you know, whatever it is. Or look at all the different people here, different groups of organizations here. And we're bringing people together and we're uniting them under one, you know, roof or whatever. These sort of competitive organizations that should be competing with each other. And we're creating unity. And you can do that in some artificial way. Like two politicians coming together and running as a president and vice president. But they were competing with each other before with each other before and the person becomes a vice president you know they're not psyched that they're the vice president they want to be the president or maybe they knew they couldn't win and they're they're running for vice president you know whatever but they're selfish people and they stab each other in the back and you see how these like look at trump and mike pence now for example you know they have their own agenda and their own goals and there's no unity you know there's this artificial unity and that's what Daji has at the Maha stop. All these people have their own agendas, and some of the things align. You know, there's this guy, those the guy with this American guy who gave a talk at the end who does something to do with you know heart bind stuff. The heart is an intelligence, which aligns with the Sajmark teachings and system. And so there's some you know there's some crossover in terms of audience and belief system there, but. You know, all these organizations exist to do whatever they do on the spiritual plane of existence. They're either, you know, legitimate organizations that help people to connect to God. Some of them might be social, some of them might be political. You know, like the um, Tukjiji people, it was about poor farmers, you know, like I was saying earlier, and supporting them on a social level. He wasn't connecting them to God. There was a godly aspect to their to their gatherings but they don't have a system that connects them to God. And that's where Heartfulness was trying to bring that to them. You know, do the Sajmark system of meditation and sittings where some of the people experienced it and said, oh, this stuff's great, right? 
I really feel connected to God because a lot of these organizations don't have that. And the Sajmar method was brought in for a number of reasons. One was the transmission and cleaning were there to elevate humanity, which desperately needs it. You know, in a post pre pre and a post apocalyptic world, when people become aware of their you know, wayward ways of our materialistic modern system where people are lamenting and regretting the, uh, you know, the punishment that we're receiving for going against the will of God. Not that God is punishing, but, you know, we're punishing ourselves, right? Like when you, you know, I always talk about how Tuesday Paul can screw over or help th- Wednesday Paul or Thursday Paul, right? If you drink tonight, then you're going to have a hangover tomorrow. You know, you're screwing over a, fir- a future version of yourself. And we're all doing that, engaging in our modern-day system. We're all screwing a future version of ourselves over. We're making mistakes that there are going to be consequences for. We're, we're doing an action that we're creating a reaction for, collectively. And the reaction that's going to hurt all of us, bringing in nuclear weapons, you know, polluting the world, being disconnected from God, not having a family, being lost and unnatural, you know, all the things that I cover on a regular basis, right? And one of the primary teachings of the Sajmark system is you don't use force because there's always a reaction to force. You know, the way religions use force and manipulation and lies to get people to do their system, that's not to be done in Sajmark. Sajmark has to appeal to people because ultimately, they, in, a, in a subtle and gentle way, because God's subtle, so the means to reach God also have to be subtle. And so that's one of the primary teachings, right? And so with Daji and Heartfulness, the goal is at all these gatherings and everything that they do on YouTube, success is defined by being a part of big organizations that themselves are, you know, corrupt and evil and whatever. You know, the the power system to be endorsed by the power system and the celebrity type people, whether they be politicians or athletes or, you know, whatever it is. Like in India, like I said, in this uh, this other voiceover we're going to talk about, they really worship these celebrities and these, these politicians and they view them as being, oh, you know, some kind of higher developed souls on a different plane of existence. Their worship of celebrity culture is, you know, and I talk about this already, you'll hear this in the in the next voiceover. So that is success to them. Being endorsed by being a part of the club, having a seat at the table, and having, whether it be Deepak Chopra or be Modi or the current president of India or whatever it is, these other organizations endorse you and say, yeah, you're legitimate, you're you're, you're the real deal. And getting the Buddha Pasham Award, whatever it is, the the push em, push em, you know, <laughs> the push em, push em award, you know, getting this award from the British Commonwealth, which is, you know, a, a word of peace and faith, and the British Commonwealth have neither. The British Commonwealth have, you know, they don't have peace because they've created wars all around the world. And, you know, America became the extension of the American military, and American power became the extension of Britain and European power and military power and money power and using these you know forceful methods to extract resources from poor people by colonizing them all around the world and so this evil idea and it was very um, you know I didn't know at the time because I was just invested in becoming what's now known as a truther and you know I'd always been this kind of person I looked beyond the official story because that's what we're, you know, I mean, I looked at, I did that beforehand before I became an Abiyasi, but certainly as an Abiyasi, you're looking beyond the superficial aspects of human ego. We're doing it within ourselves and we're doing it with other people. And Babaji always looked for the saint within every person. Babaji's goal, Babaji's work, was that he saw the saint within each person. Of course, Charji carried this on. Seeing the saint within each person and not the ego, not the 
you know, whatever the manifestation of their personality was. And it could be difficult. They could suck as a person. They could be, you know, considered a bad person. But if they were sincere in their spiritual practice, Babaji, you know, Charji and the preceptors and all these people, it was their, you know, duty to help these people remove the negative tendencies and, you know, help them create good character qualities and work to become the the saint within the master within master them their lower selves and manifest their soul as it's you know ultimately an expression as a divine being like what happens with the masters of the system be an example of this right to master yourself you have to master your lower tendencies and you become this you know this ultimate version of yourself a uh, expression of your soul and you merge back into the source and there's you know a pathway in a spiritual evolution that goes with that and you have to work at that you have to constantly be remembering god and con connecting with god you know constant remembrance and you have to work towards pulling that divinity uh, out from within you and not allowing your ego to run amok and take you in the wrong direction right so all those things are you know essential to the sashmark system but it's going beyond the superficial, the external expression of ego and hype and, you know, all the, the BS that exists in our current day world. And so there was a clear teaching, and I read some in recent, you know, videos about the My Vision chapter of Reality at Dawn. And then there were these other teachings, but the primary teaching was that our current system, the current economic system, the current warlike system, the current power structure you know the powers that be that run our system and the people themselves were moving away from divinity they were becoming grosser and grosser and moving away from their true spiritual goal and their true spiritual essence right that we are doing damage creating some scars creating spiritual grossness material grossness that's going to bar our advancement right we are yet but slaves of wishes playing bar to our advancement. And so the idea here is the current power structure was taking humanity in the wrong direction and we were willfully going along with that. And that had to change. And Babaji was given orders by these divine beings, you know, coming from the true essence of God to recreate, you know, to take down the current power structure and then help people create a new system based in spirituality as its base, you know, built on a foundation of spirituality. This is the My Vision chapter. I read that in a recent video. I don't know when. And, and I was also reading from religion, you know, the current religions that are evil in their nature. And Babaji defines them as that, right? These organizations that are for profit, that use the idea that they're connecting you with God for material benefit and for power, religious power, right? And so the power of religion, the power of money, money power, there was a system that's created. And, you know, most of us kind of already know that. It's a system that breaks the family up, the modern system, and now, you know, even before computers. And when the computers were just coming out, the Internet was just developing. In 1999, Babaji was giving these messages. You know, then this follow-up was the whispers of the brighter world messages talking about this demonic system and this power structure which clearly defined it as money power and you know the internet as insidious um, electromagnetic pollution that hurts your subtle bodies your the other soul level connection the energetic aspect of your being that cre creates and manifests your life and your you know physical body these things were all evil and were hurting you it's very clear and so I started to do research into this. My brother had been, you know, an early level truther when he was in Vietnam. And there was this knowledge out there about the bad side of the system, right? You know, you have the hype, you have the, the rhetoric, you have the marketing, the lies and things about your system, about how great your country is, how patriotic you should be, all these things, how great the corporations are, how great Monsanto is. You know, they all have their spiel. Pharmaceutical companies, they all have their, you know, their their hype and their, you know, what they do to sell you something, right? 
but then you look deeper into what they're actually about. They're not going to tell you they're about money and they're about profits and they don't care if they do make ethical, you know, ethically, comp they compromise their ethics to achieve those goals, right? And so when you look into the system beyond the, the you know, the what you're being sold, beyond the marketing, beyond the rhetoric, beyond the indoctrination, when you look into your own system, the governmental system, you look into the corporations, you look into the power that runs the world, and you see there's a darkness and an evil that goes against the will of God. It's easy to, for people to see. You know, there's an abuse of power. And we see it in the colonials, colonialization of countries by Great Britain and the European countries. White people colonizing black people or people of different skin, aboriginal people. And stealing their land in some cases or enslaving them in others. Exploiting their, them for you know slave-like labor extracting their resources and their wealth the wealth of the you know collective masses of people and giving it to themselves doing that to their own people you know britain conquering ireland and scotland and imposing their will and extracting their resources and having this system of kings and lords and royalty that's these parasitic people we know this right we know how bad this is even though like you know people celebrate the royal family for example and this, you know, these well-mannered people that go out and there's, they have this celebrity status. They're born with this royal blood, but if you look beyond that and see what kind of people they were, and they were, you know, robbers and barons and thieves and criminals that achieved power in a running a scam where, where a small select people live in opulence where everyone else suffers. The masses suffer poverty. It's a parasitic relationship and it's a you know, it's a, a form of a cult, right? And so for Daji to get this award from that cult, which is the British, you know, government and their royal family and their royal, you know, the commonwealth of countries that have all been colonized is a joke, right? And so I started doing research on this and things that were said in Whispers of the Brighter World and Reality at Dawn and things that I knew that were out there from, you know, my brother who was an early level truther and I started doing research on this stuff at a time when the internet was this, you know, this part of what the internet was, was a, a truth finding, you know, where you could find information and was there and people could share it, right, on a level that was, you know, was not um, available before. And so as I was doing this in 2005 and 6 and 7 and, you know, throughout this period of time, Eventually, I came across the United Nations, which is an organization that has got an element of it called the Population Award, which is about rewarding people for population reduction, for reducing the world's population. Bill Gates has gotten this award, amongst other people. You know, these people who have openly worked to reduce the world's population. A uh, former president of India, Indira Gandhi, got the first award. I think it was Indira Gandhi, whoever it was. It was a, a woman president of India. And shared it with the president of China because they were both working on forced contraception and forced, uh, forced um, abortions and making, you know, an effort to reduce the population by, I think it was like millions. And it still didn't put a dent in the population growth of those countries, but they were given... I don't know, some amount of money and, you know, they were given one of these awards, right? And that was just one of the negative things about the UN. Another thing was all the corruption, human trafficking that happened in Bosnia. There was a movie called The Whistleblower, which documented this woman discovering UN's involvement with human trafficking during the Bosnian War. And there were other times UN's been caught human trafficking, selling human people, prostitutes, kids, whatever. And then all these other things that go along with it. And so the UN is a, you know, is a bad organization. It's the United Nations. The countries are all coming together, and there's this the hype and what they sell you. And there are some good things that they do, you know, that make it look like a good organization, but it's parasitic. And it creates these NGOs, which it uses to run its agenda through these trusted organizations. And, you know, I was learning about that. And just as I was learning about that, I noticed that Saj Marg had become an NGO. 
So I wrote to Chargy about it, and I said, you know all the negative things about the United Nations. And Chargy was in a time of his life where he was sick. He had just come out of a coma. Um, you know, he was in, uh, in a coma for a long period of time, and he was just, you know, on the end of his days. And he said, I don't really have anything to do with this, and he referred me to somebody else. And I voiced my concerns, I presented the evidence, and these clowns couldn't see it. And even if they could see it, they were not about, you know, that's told, we don't want radical idealism. I mean, I've read the quote before, to cause us to miss this opportunity to be a part of the UN. And it was not an opportunity at all, because the UN has a bad reputation. There are a lot of people who hate the UN around the world. The UN has made them suffer, war and torn countries or whatever it is. And the UN itself is, like I said, a corrupt organization. The guy who created the UN, the Rockefeller family, you know, they tried to create an oil monopoly that was broken up by the U.S. government. And they were, you know, pushing for, I mean, he was, you know, doing bad things with his money power. You know, one of my viewers just sent me, there was a woman talking about what the Rockefellers did, some of the evil empire, uh, you know, building evil um, financial empire that they did. And then he built the UN as a way to, you know, exploit the world. It wasn't a, a positive thing to bring the world together or stop wars, right? And Babaji was offered a chance, an opportunity to join with the UN. And I've read his letter multiple times. And it was a very critical, harsh letter for Babaji, who was very subtle and very loving. But he reprimanded the UN for their you know, idea of trying to use the modern day weapons. I mean, he was actually wrote something to uh, Casey, Dr. Casey Varachari and say they're trying to use the modern weapons to create peace, right? Like, it's a joke. You can't create peace through war. Like, it isn't something that you would even think about. So the UN was defined by Babaji, and he didn't join with them, because why would he? So I said to these guys, you know, Babaji had a chance to join with the UN in the 1950s, whatever it was. And he wrote this letter, and they were using this letter as their now reason to join with the UN but they wanted the power the prestige these clowns these guys that charge you defined as the worst character moneyed people who were rude and you know were obnoxious and big egos and they had money these guys were successful and they contributed to the mission and they volunteered their work but they also were just bad people and I showed you this video clip I showed it numerous times the charge talks about the character of these people right um, and you can find it exists somewhere, you know, wherever. If anybody's listening to this, knows where the video is, you can link it. It's, you know, out there. But he defines these people as just the, his inner circle people. And these inner circle people were pushing for the, the UN. But I was, like, the first person, at least I know of, that saw what was happening to the mission and was putting an opposition against it, was saying we need to keep this pure, and Babaji didn't want any part with the UN, and the UN is bad, and it's not going to res result in anything. And the way that they dealt with me, they never heard my point of view. And it wasn't my point of view, because it was the right point of view. It was God's point of view, right? I was on the side of divinity and the purity of the Sajmark system, and the UN is on the side of the evil, evil organizations, the money power, that Babaji was working to create a, you know, the events and the material, whatever it was, to bring down that system. They're embracing an evil system where Babaji's work was to destroy an evil system. And they were using the selling out of the principles and the purity of the Sajmark system and embracing the UN as a banner of success. They were adding to the website, look, we're an NGO. You know, in India, back then, there was an NGO for every 400 people. Now it's like for every 700. Like, you can't, you know, throw a rock in the city and not hit an NGO. There's NGOs everywhere. And what they do is they run their agenda through these organizations. So you have a trusted organization in a local area that becomes an NGO, and then the NGO, the UN, will bring one of those people in. First of all, they use it to extract money because the UN doesn't have any money, and you know, support and work and labor, volunteers or whatever it is. But also they use it to run their agenda through and get people on board with their agenda because people then think their organization that they trust, like in this case Saj Marg, is aligned with the UN. And so I saw this years ago. 
in 2011 and 12 and I fought against it and they you know weren't hearing any of that and I said nobody likes the UN like these holidays are goofy do you know anybody who's ever celebrated a UN holiday I mean this is what Dodgy's embracing they're goofy holidays you know he can't celebrate Charji's birthday but he'll celebrate International Day of Peace from an organization that's overseen 64 wars and ordered, you know, at the time that I was doing this in 2011, the UN ordered uh, America and France and these other countries to destroy Gaddafi, a good leader for his people, who was who took the country. He was the UN had these Millennium Development Goals that they t- tried to run through the Sajmark system, and Charji was very kind of offended that they brought this guy in to pitch his crap to the people. And he gave a speech that I only saw part of, but it was pretty brutal. It was like a rebuttal to this UN clown that just came in and t- tried to sell his evil to Chargy's people, and Chargy wasn't having any of it. And instead of these clowns that were around Chargy realizing, yeah, he's not on board with this, they pushed it through anyway. It was the beginning of what is now the, deb- the dodgy debacle, the dodgy cult, right? Where they're taking something pure when they don't even read it or they don't know it, they don't believe in it and they take something pure and they you know they take it in the wrong direction the opposite of direction right and using these artificial goals and artificial you know accomplishments as a way to, to say yeah we're doing a great job right when they clearly aren't but I fought them about this and I had no power and no anything I could do and from you know my place in America and you know whatever I wasn't well respected whatever the stuff that happened with my you know, marriage and things and uh, all these things. There was like negative narrative about me and my family, whatever, these things. And I had no ability to do anything other than bring up the purity of the system and the fact that Babaji had an opportunity to join the UN but didn't. And I didn't understand what was happening. And now it's clearer, right, what they were going to do this on all levels. Because these guys' definition of success, and I was friends with some of these clowns at Facebook, was celebrity endorsement and the endorsement of powerful people. And that was their, what they consider successful, being a successful person, being a successful organization. And so these clowns, when they ever had some pseudo-celebrity, whether it be Diaper Baba, or whether it be Modi or any of these people, they would get a selfie with the guy, you know, because that's a big deal in the Indian culture, like to post something on Facebook and say, look at me. You know, people would come up to me and my family in the ashram Indian people and want to take a picture of us just because we are white and you know there was something that was a rarity and then post on social media but they wouldn't even interact with us afterwards they were using us like for props just so they could get likes and thumbs up it's the degradation of the Sajmark system like that was some like accomplishment that they got photos with white people you know I went along with it the first couple of times but then and it was very rude and like these people come up take a photo with you like you were a celebrity or something just so they can you know get some play and run on social media amongst their friends and family it was ridiculous right it doesn't mean anything the same way people take pictures with these goofy celebrities who are themselves spiritually depraved people that are at a lower level right Charlie saying the lowest part of the higher is still higher than the highest part of the lower the lowest part of being a spiritual person, the spiritual, you know, people, the spiritual movement, is still higher than the richest, most powerful people, the most successful people in the materialistic side of things who have not yet become spiritual. That's a clear teaching of the Sajmark system, that people who are spiritual are on a higher trajectory and have reached a level that materially successful people who aren't connected to God aren't even yet, you know getting a taste of they're not even on that beginning rung to you know whatever that is right but I fought against this UN thing and so like I was already you know I already was all about this and I had done all this research into the actual system the power system the money power system the military power system my own country America the United Nations the global uh, financial you know structure the IMF the banks the Federal Reserve banks that are running this financial scam. There's the older, the the overall banks like the IMF structure of banking, and then there's the private 
or the individual uh, sovereign uh, country by country control bank in America it's called the Federal Reserve but each country has these banks that push this debt based system which is called um, a usury system you know a pyramid scheme a Ponzi scheme that's debt based where death where debt is wealth and that you're everyone's in debt and that idea is that people are trading debt back and forth when you trade a dollar a dollar is actually an IOU it's a debt you know, the government is a promise to pay you the value of this piece of paper that has no intrinsic value. It's not backed by gold, you know, the gold standard, the way currency and money used to work. So through my desire to um, look into these teachings that Babaji said, you know, become researchers in the whispers of the brighter world messages, and then also the things that he said in reality at dawn, and, you know, all these things that Charji had said in various talks, and this understanding out there of the evil nature of our system our medical system that kills people right our um, education system that teaches people you know the uh, the lies and the the you know the lies of the empire right the lies of the the uh, you know it's a, a history of the conquerors of the of the colonizers right the corporations that lie about their you know the pharmaceutical companies that you know, give you these drugs that have side effects. I, there's a, I'm going to cover on my other channel today. There was a, an ad I saw last night, and it, I think it was skin care. I just saw the end of it, and it was something to do with people's skin, and it causes suicidal ideation. There are 200 medications out there. This was an article in some, you know, I mean, a, a fairly, uh, you know, an established magazine. There's over 200 medications out there that cause you to have suicidal ideation, suicidal thoughts, and also depression, and or depression. And many of them are psychological medications that cause you to be depressed and want to commit suicide. And Dodgy is one of these, you know, that's how he made his money, right? These evil pharmaceuticals. I mean, we all know about big pharma, and we know about big religion, and we know about big banks, and we know about, you know, big military, and we know about these things. And... What Dodgy's done, and his clowns and heartfulness, is to go to those powerful organizations and try to connect with them. And make it like, oh, we're just trying to win them over by teaching them how to pray and teaching them how to be spiritual. But you yourself, Dodgy, you, you know, you fraud, and all the people around you are a piss poor example of spiritual people. You, you guys have the worst characters and you make the worst decisions and you run scams like the Brighter Minds and you do things that a spiritual person should never do. And you do it in the name of spirituality, which is a cult. That's a, you know, this is what this channel exists for, right? And you define your success by being endorsed by evil, powerful organizations that Babaji was sent here to destroy, that Babaji was given orders to destroy. And you're embracing these organizations and calling it success, right? And so that was what this Mahastav was all about, the, you know, defining success as the endorsement of the corrupt Indian political system, the corrupt World Economic Forum, the corrupt, uh, you know, the corrupt UN, the, you know, the evil, I mean, these things are all evil organizations that Babaji was sent down to destroy, which is clear in his teachings that that was going to happen, that he was manifesting the destruction of the current power structure and the people that run it, and people were going to, you know, have to deal with the a system that we're all 100% dependent on, which is another thing I learned because me and my family were farming and I'm farming now, you know, I, whatever that is, you know, whatever I'm able to do. And, you know, I milked the cow for six years, uh, you know, multiple cows. And we learned to make cheese. We learned to do these things. We grew food and these things and reclaim the old ways. And Babaji says in whispers that people in the future are going to have to l l learn to use their hands. And everyone kind of senses it now. Like the apocalypse is, behind, is uh, upon us because the current system and the economic system and the morality of people and the, the lack of being natural people and being selfish and being a takers instead of givers and all these things and being hedonistic and all about oneself and just you know not giving back and not serving God and not serving your family, the breakdown of the family, the breakdown of the, the natural human social system of a village-based family and making it into these you know modern... Uh, cities where people live in like these 
bug-like colonies, right? It's all natural to us, all based in, you know, materialism. And Daji and his cronies are leaning into the evil and calling that success. And they've bastardized the, you know, they cannibalized the Sajmark system to warp it to, you know, uh, to line with this world view that is the wrong world view that Babaji was sent down to destroy, right? And in all that, he has failed. Like, he's still not bringing in people. They, they're not bringing in money. They're not bringing in people. They have this ashram that was built by Charji and Charji's legacy and Charji's structure, infrastructure they created. And they have this volunteer organization that Charji created to pull off gatherings. Instead of using them the way that they were designed for the ashram itself and the gatherings to celebrate the master's birthdays and focus on the transmission and cleaning, these are the tools that have to be, you know, looked as, you know, the system of teachings and whether it be constant remembrance or building one's character and the books that were there to help you become a great Abiyasi and, a, a, you know, a, 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 the best version of yourself. He's canceled those two birthdays, Babaji's and Charji's, and he's rolling in these goofy multi-organizational lies and frauds to make himself look good and getting awards from these, you know, these debauched evil entities, these powerful entities, whether it be the British Commonwealth or, you know, the Indian government, the corrupt Indian government, and looking for, you know, some seat at the table and to be a player in the global power structure, you know, and doing, embracing the evil Catholic Church and all the, you know, the elements of the Hindu religion that's corrupt and evil, and calling that success when it's the opposite, right? If you understand the Sajmark teachings and all these dopes that who read the books but didn't understand them and didn't, you know, realize how important and, and like, it was a, a discipline that we had to have to keep this system pristine and not pollute it with these other corrupt organizations and materialistic, uh, you know, intentions for, you know, power and money and these things, right? And turn it into some bogus religion just like everything freaking else. And this is why, you know, Daji's a real piece of crap as a person as a master, as a spiritual abiyasi, as a, you know, whatever he is. Because he's taken something that wasn't his to ruin and ruined it. And then calling it a success when by every definition it's a failure. Other than you have celebrities and important, so-called important people. Now that you have relationships with them and they're bad people and they're, you know, representing a defunct organization and a defunct power structure that Babaji was sent to destroy. You know, what Babaji was created to destroy through his spiritual work and the seeds of the destruction are already there. Instead of believing in Babaji's teachings and embracing them and Charji's teachings, they've chosen to erase those teachings for the most part and, you know, take those teachings and the ones that appeal to their worldview and the, what they're trying to sell now is the, the heartfulness cult and take the teachings that'll help them, you know, whether it be the the Yatra points in his spiritual anatomy piece of crap book, or any of Daji's talks and things where he's trying to sell something as being a part of this global structure, this power structure that, you know, Sajmarg is here to replace. This thing has to be killed and destroyed, and something better has to take its place for the salvation of humanity. That's the clear teachings of Sajmarg. And anybody who tells you anything different is a freaking liar and a piece of shit, right? And so the two things here that are a failure, there's three things that are a failure. Number one, the definition of success, because the definition of success for them is the endorsement of these powerful entities and these corrupt other religious organizations that Babaji sent here to destroy and create a, you know, something better. Sajmarg exists because everything else that is there sucks. Sajmarg ex exists to replace all these religions. You know, Babaji intercommuned with Jesus and asked him to impart spiritual training to Christians that were coming to him. Jesus not only said yes, he blessed the mission, and he said that he's completely bummed out, you know, and this is my paraphrasing of it, of what, the way that Christianity has become the opposite of what he was designed to be, and he put Babaji in charge of Christianity spiritually, like he was overlooking it. 
Not that Babaji would walk out there like Dodgy, Dodgy did with Tuktuji and say, Jesus just merged in me. I'm now your leader. Like he wouldn't do that because he's not, you know, a goofy, you know, piece of crap like Dodgy is. But, you know, that's what he was given. He was given, he was supposed to oversee Christianity just like all these other spiritual beings, Swami Vivekananda, these other saints and people came to him and intercommuned and that they were helping him create something to wash away all these defunct spiritual and religious organizations that were now cultish and materialistic and were no longer serving their purpose, as well as the rest of the power structure. And Daji's looking at success as embracing that power structure. That's number one. And number two, he's willing to take the teachings of the system, whether it be embracing yoga that they weren't supposed to do, materialize and you know, monetize it, crank out all this merch, all these things that have nothing to do with Saj Mark and, and crap all over the legacy of Chargy and the teachings of Chargy, erase them from the mission and get rid of the holidays and turn this into some wellness center, new age wellness center that has lost all of its purity and its you know, internal condition in terms of the, the energetic condition at the ashram and all these other things and turn it into something that's just gross and the opposite of what Saj Mark is supposed to be. And in doing all this, point number three, he's not even bringing in more people or more money. I mean, I don't know what kind of scams they're running and what they're making out of those scams. And, the, and the, you know, they're certainly making money on the real estate. You know, they got collective money from donations of people who had faith in Chargy to buy a thousand acres of land in Hyderabad. And now they're selling off that land through these apartment complexes, building these joint ventures with this clown, Diaper Baba who is a, you know, just been reprimanded for his criminal activity and seedy business uh, practices, you know, doing all these things and, you know, real estate, selling these luxury apartments there, which, you know, is misuse of the faith and the, the public monies that Chargy said the next master is going to have to, you know, be very careful about, be very vigilant about being, doing the, not doing what Dodgy's doing is basically what he said, right? to think multiple times before doing anything. I mean, this is what he said his successor was going to have to do. And Dodgy's clearly done the opposite. He's failed his master. He's failed the hierarchy. And he's not even bringing people in. It's there's no, you know, whatever people are attracted to because of the cult-like as aspect of the, you know, system and the materialism that he's brought in, the numbers aren't increasing. And so he's failed on top of it, even on every, you know, every metric other than, selling out a system and getting the endorsement of people that you shouldn't even like think of as higher or better or you know any of these things you know so-called powerful people who are themselves lost and corrupted and you know not worthy of being emulated or looked up to and so like it's just a joke and you can see it in the maha stuff like this is a definition so they can roll out this idea oh, look at all these important people look at how we pulled this thing off well, you know, Chargy taught you how to pull off a gathering. So people already know how to do that. Based in Chargy's work and his, you know, his his excellent, uh, his just ability to do things and be good at them. And all these gatherings were supposed to be there for the masters where the transmission is of a higher nature and materiality. You know, Babaji used to say minimum comforts and maximum spiritual benefit. You know, st stick away from the comforts and the you know, the luxuries that Daji's bringing in and focus on the spiritual, like not the material pleasures and things. I mean, that's what Saj is all about. Go to a spiritual level. And, you know, Daji's failed on all these things. And he's calling a success. And all these dopes that should know better have gone along with it for whatever reason. And if you're one of these people, you're a piece of crap and you should know better. You know, the teachings are there and it's obvious. You just have to look beyond all the BS, all the bullshit that Dodgy's selling to you. And if you do that, you'd see, you know, that this is all a lie. You know, this is not Saj Mark. This is not Saj Mark to success. The goals that Dodgy has and the, and the things that he's saying that are successful aren't successful because they're the opposite of what Saj Mark is supposed to be about. And so he's selling off the system and he's redefining success as something of a material, you know, seat at the table rather than the purity of the spiritual system that helps people connect to God on a deep level 
and can ultimately transform humanity into a higher level of being and create a world where there'll be a world full of saints, which was the ultimate goal of the Sajmark system. And anybody with, you know, half a brain could see this. All right, so I have this other little um, voiceover I did last night. I'm going to add that to this and then wrap up this video. Okay, so I just wanted to do a brief. It's um, Sunday, March 17th. I've completed the all the videos now. Um, you know, the stuff you just saw from the from the, you know, stuff I put up on my other channel. And I've been covering this intensely and, you know, calling Donald G out on, by title. And, you know, it's getting like four or 500 views, not that many views there um, per video. And some of those people are Abiyasi's coming. Some of the people are just, you know, regulars from my channel here. These, you know, this channel, Journey Series Washers. But, you know, I'm not under any illusion that I personally am going to somehow take Dodgy down in the heartfulness, you know, through my channel and through these videos, he's going to be taken down. You know, he now has, he's interlocked with people from the UN, the World Economic Forum, and he's locked into um, all these politicians, heavy hitters in India, he has that big ashram and all these things. You know, all this stuff that was gifted to him by Charji and built by Charji and Babaji and Lalaji. And, you know, he's taking it in the complete wrong direction. But in terms of materialistic definition and saving face or, you know, how it looks uh, in terms of, you know, celebrity culture. And there's a worship in India of politicians and people who are who have made it in some way. When me and my kids used to go to the movies there, they would applaud celebrities, and even when they ran commercials for politicians, they would applaud the politicians. <laughs> it was bad. The politicians were really scrum, scummy and disreputable, but they would applaud them in ways that was disturbing, like how much they look up to. You know, it could be someone who's like chief engineer of the water company in a city. Like, that guy's a celebrity, right? Like, these people who are just... You know, they've raised, they've raised up to high levels and they're considered important people, you know, Mahatmas. And when they were doing this, um, you know, this scam that they're doing out there, this, uh, the Mahastav, and they introduce these people, it's a resume. It's like this, you know, and they introduce Daji as a Budum Pasham award winner and, you know, all these things as a way to, a way to validate him. Now he's got this other award from the um, British Commonwealth. And, you know, that's a validation for su success. And they look up to people like, oh, well, you've been validated by the beast, you know, by the system. And, you know, he has that support of powerful people. He's interlocked with them. And, you know, just like when Diaper Baba got taken down, I mean, they could easily turn on him in a second if the Brighter Mind scam got caught or whatever. You know, and I'm not predicting or anticipating any of that happening, but I just don't know long, how long he can go. Like, he must be on some sort of a short rope here, he should be, in terms of the divine process. You know, the divine hierarchy, Babaji, and the divine beings that are running the system. And whatever this was supposed to do, how long does it does he get to wreck the, the system, and what's the end game? Like, how does this story play out? It's the only thing of interest left for me. The only thing, like, I want to see, you know, watching him just suck over and over again, and he's horrible at all of it. It's not really very interesting. It's predictable. And, you know, it's just pandering to the, you know, the, the dull-minded, the dim-witted, you know, the people without critical thinking skills and abstract thought and people who don't understand what the Sajmark system is all about and watching him go in the opposite direction or people have been bought and sold and compromised for some position or this thing or that thing. You know, none of that's interesting because it's already, it's a known element and it's just repetitive behaviors. You know, it's, I mean, interesting in the sense that I can mock it and, you know, make fun of it like I do other things that are going on similarly, but, you know, not as bad because they're not spiritual organizations. But, you know, I um, you know, like to see what the end game is. Like, when, how long does he get to get away with this kind of stuff that he's doing before there are real-life consequences? And then what happens next to the organization and all the people around them, right? Like, how does that play out? Like, on a subscaric level... You know, how much are they doing divine work by playing 
the villain or playing you know the bad guys or you know what part of the plan you know is this permissible right they have leeway because they're supposed to do what they're doing because Saj Bark has to go in that direction for this period of time whatever it is right like those things are unknowns and that's the only thing that interests me at this point because the rest of it's just you know I mean it's hard to watch when it's something that was as great as Saj Bark and they've just wrecked it and made it you know sham it's just a sham and like you know anything that they do they call a success all the failures you know everything that's a failure they call a success and you know when it's that kind of yardstick and yes you know, that kind of um way that you reverse what's actually happened because when you go against the the simplicity and the purity of the seismic system that's a failure and dodgy's long past that so everything that he does is some way to you know validate himself in the system but there's no people coming in it's not growing and whatever growth there is it's artificial growth because it's not real spiritual people and it's not you know they're not receiving the multi-sitting spiritual benefit they'd get from a gathering one of the bandaras one of the birthday celebrations and so everything's being you know bastardized 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 and you know just taken down and um contaminated so like you know it's all that's all a failure anyways it's getting late so i'm just going to wrap this one up here but i just want to add those thoughts Okay, so I read this um, a few days ago, and I forgot about it. And one of my viewers reminded me today by sending me a you know email about it. And so the Sajmarg, um, there is um, Sajmarg North American Bulletin. Again, I wasn't receiving these until I opened up this new account because I just was tired of hearing about Daji and his corruption and his BS. But um, this is a, a bulletin about Dodgy coming to America. So it says, Save the Day North American Gathering as part of the ATA Convention 2024. Now they did this every year the past couple of years. The first time they did it, they said Dodgy was going to come to Washington, D.C. and that you should get your ATA, American Telugu Association, tickets reserve them right away so telugu is a part of you know there's states in india there's the telugani uh, language the telugu uh, system and the current ashram the kana ashram is in a place where telugu is the language kind of a neat looking language it's all very circular like the letters have like lots of circles in them so when you look uh, at one well, it looks like a bunch of o's like you know there's there's subtle difference in variation in their their lettering structure, right? But anyways, Dodgy's not a part or from that area. He's from Gujarati and he's in a different caste and a different state. And so he hasn't been able to bring local people in. So there are a lot of people who are Telugani and they're really into, you know, Dodgy. And a lot of them, some of these things are power. Some of these people are powerful people in America and they're both, you know, people powerful in the heartfulness organization they have high not powerful but high you know they're high level ranking people one of these guys i met you know stayed at his house i mean he was a nice guy whatever you know kind of a i mean brilliant guy like he's got patents and things like this but he's got a position in the heartfulness organization and also he's involved with this ata american telugu association and there's a woman who's very uh you know, she was a big chargey person. Now she's throwing chargey under the bus. I've talked about her before. And Dodgy's given her own platform where she gets to be on Sajmark Facebook, uh, the uh, Heartfulness Facebook, and be like a pontificator. In my opinion, she's just a horrible person because she's throwing chargey under the bus. And I just never, you know, she just was somebody I didn't like from the get go. So she's a part of this American Telugu thing as well, right? And I don't have anything against the American Telugu thing. I don't know what it is. I'm not, you know. I don't know what kind of organization it is, and it's not important. But it isn't anything to do with heartfulness. Like, it's another one of these things where they're, they merge, they want to merge these organizations for their reasons, and their reasons aren't aligned with the spiritual essence of the Sajmark system. And so Dodgy, you know, the American used to have, the American mission used to have to have one gathering every year, and they called it the, you know, the national meeting, and Chargy would either come to America for it or whenever he was in America, they would have that meeting because it's, you know, legal. It's a part of the, you know, having this organization registered. And when he couldn't come to America, they would have it 
the meeting um, via like you know Skype before Skype existed you know some sort of video call that Chargy would would have with the members of the American mission and I think one year the American gathering was in India when Chargy was too old and sick to travel in 2012 and I think they had the meeting then I don't know if you can have the meeting on foreign soil I'm not sure but it's a legal thing right and Dodgy had this meeting at the American Telugu Association which was not you know it's not heartfulness and so they said Dodgy was going to come and that the ATA was offering tickets at half price if you bought them early you know you bought the tickets to their you know they have a whole fair and a whole they have a bunch of booths and food and things set up there right for people who are Indian but they're also you know from Telugu or people who want to experience the Telugu culture or whatever right you know just some cultural thing and they said Dodgy was going to come, but two, two weeks before that, he had asked people to um, to pray for his health. And so I'm like, I don't think he's coming. And Chargy's birthday was like, the American Telugu Association thing was like, uh, like early July or something. It was right near Chargy's birthday. And I'm like, if he's going to be back for Chargy's birthday, it's a long way to travel. When Chargy traveled to America, he would you know go to Europe and he would you know he would go to different places it was a it was like a you know month two month long travels he might travel around America and also different places in Europe and things on the way here he would you know it was the whole thing um and so it seemed like with Dodgy Health being the way it was and Chargy's impending birthday you know back when he was still celebrating it it seemed like you know this is back in 2022 or 21 or whatever that he wasn't going to come and then after, and you know, they sent out a message to people, you know, buy these tickets soon, and Indian people particularly, but all people love a deal. And so if tickets are half price, why not buy them early? And then right after they sent that message out, a couple of days passed, and they announced that Dodgy couldn't travel, which I knew immediately because he already had said his health was bad. So they did a bait and switch. They pretended Dodgy was going to come, and he appeared by, um, you know, via Skype, you know, whatever. And he's been doing Skype calls with the American Telugu Association. And so he pretty much ignores the American mission now. He does everything through the ATA, which is, you know, he's compromised the system because the ATA has nothing to do with heartfulness. And, you know, so, so it'll have something to do with heartfulness, but not Saj Marg, right? And, you know, there's no longer any American emission. You know, he could only raise $3,000 in a fundraiser. And so pretty much everything is the ATA. And so they're saying he's going to come. Again, here, let me uh, read this to you. North American, you know, this bait and switch was kind of offensive that they knew he wasn't going to come, pretend he was going to come. He got people to buy tickets. And they showed the um, the audience, and there was only a couple of people I recognized, only a couple of American-Americans there. And for the most part, nobody that showed up. Preceptors, I mean, they, you know, they didn't come to this gathering or whatever it was, right, this, you know, this thing. Dear brothers and sisters, as you may already be aware, Dodgy has enthusiastically accepted the American Telugu Association's invitations to their 19th annual convention in Atlanta. Please mark your calendars for the Hurtfulness Convention. I had this great name, nickname for it, and I completely forgot it. Um, <laughs> which will be held simultaneously with the ATA Global Convention event in one of the main halls of the convention center to accommodate all aspirants to benefit from Dodgy's physical presence, the program will commence. Well, they wouldn't because if it's going to be global and they're going to have this teleconference, I mean, a lot of people aren't going to be there with them. And I don't think he's coming to America. June 7th, heartfulness program begins in the evening. June 9th, program ends by early afternoon. We encourage all heartfulness meditators to participate in this event as volunteers with large-scale participation accepted, expected from the ATA members, this presents a fantastic opportunity to facilitate dissemination of heartfulness awareness and adoption of, to all participants. Please feel free to sign up for any category that you may deem fit. Uh, registration may, event scheduled and accommodation info we will be available soon. Please stay tuned for further updates and feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Let's all come together as a big Heartfulness family to make this event a big success. Um, you know, so we've seen this scam before. 
he doesn't show up and it's not a real heartfulness you know Saj Mark event it's something else right it's something that like it's involving a, a second party and there's money exchange right people are paying money to this organization and heartfulness itself donated over a hundred thousand dollars to one at least one of these events so heartfulness you know donated money and they ran an ad um, you know the donors or whatever so, so I don't know if somebody in the heartfulness donated a hundred thousand dollars and did it in heartfulness's name or whatever I don't know how that went but either way it's not Saj Mark like this is not what Saj Mark is about Saj Mark stands on its own you know as an organization and as a system and all these things that Daji's doing to have these um, connect connections with these other uh, you know entities whether they be governmental or these other things is a failure of the system you know charges showed up at things like this and you know as extra things like he might do something like this as an extra thing uh, you know but not a joint thing right not a two organizations working together like he would show up as a guest and give a talk or whatever but not something where there's like this idea that these two organizations are one and they're not right you can be members of anybody can do Saj Marg or you know what they're now calling heartfulness but Heartfulness, you know, Saj Mark should never join with other organizations. You know, Heartfulness is just a, you know, a name that Dodgers created for his own financial and, you know, being kind of called a founder in these things. Like it's, you know, he, he wants to be called the founder of Heartfulness, but they want to say that Saj Mark and Heartfulness is the same thing. Like, well, then you're not a founder. You've just changed the name, right? So what is it? You know, so it's just, you know, it's just a scam. Okay, so there's a couple of whispers of the brighter world I want to read here. This one's from Thursday, December 30th, 1999, 10 a.m. Your only treasure on earth is the good uh, good you can all do for your neighbor. You can't change the affairs of the world, such as laws or politics, nor prevent wars, but you can do a personal, you can have a personal margin where you act. Don't deprive yourselves of, of it. Good thoughts and good deeds from a very positive asset, which can, if amplified, restore the balance of the world. We place all confidence in all of you and in all of, the, all of those who, who, spiritual and humanitarian alike, are working for the good and, and peace. As for you all, try to take stock of your current lives and look to the future. You can draw up a plan of action and act accordingly. For, your per, for, pure, hearts, according, for pure hearts, nothing is impossible. The simple act of wanting with all your might to change the world by changing yourself is a commendable undertaking we know that all this talk may surprise some of our aspirants but life is a whole but life is a whole you can't advance with a happy heart and at peace while walking on runes babaji so that's quite important Okay, so that's it for the messages. I hadn't caught up on them. There's more. I, you know, there's some I'm not sure if I read here, but I've read it other places. Um, and so I don't know. Uh, I've saved some recent ones that are about the collapse and rebirth of civilization, some of these things. And, you know, we're getting into those messages now. But like I said, I, I think I've read them all here, but if not, I've read them in other places on my other channel and things like this. But anyways, that's enough for today. So I got a video from my other channel I'm going to put in here uh, for those of you who don't go to that channel again if you've already seen this when the um, this image returns then I'll we'll be back to um, you know <laughs> the whole thing we'll be back to um, uh, new content here so here's the the video okay so here it is this is going to be a standalone video greetings brothers and sisters on my uh, exposing dodgy cult uh, Heartfulness Cult Dodgy Fraud Channel, Dodgy Scam Channel. <laughs> um, fraud and scam could both be appropriate words. And this will be a part of the journey series as well. You are cordially invited to the 125th birth anniversary celebrations of Reverend Babaji Maharaj. Experience Heartfulness Meditation. So, um, here it is, right? This is, um, Babaji's birthday. There's going to be one batch uh, starting April 29th. 
Bobby Dee's birthday is the 30th. And the second batch, May 4th to 6th, 2024. And I'm also going to make a short video to put up on Twitter. I think on Twitter, maybe on my uh, Pockets of the Future Facebook page. But I think I'll try Twitter first. I have a Twitter account I'm not really using very much. So I can put these videos up there. I can show the uh, video clip. First of Dodgy um, making this announcement that he's canceling Charji's birthday and Babaji's. But it was really about Charji's birthday all along. I think most people understand that because he is talking about Babaji being his master. He talks about Babaji more than Lalaji, and he doesn't talk about Charji at all, not in positive terms. And so a year ago, in uh, February 2023, he said he channeled Babaji, and Babaji said there's just too many uh, finally agreed with Daji. There's just too many gatherings a year, four gatherings a year. And Daji being a complete liar, uh, I mean, it was obvious lie at the time, and I was waiting to see what would happen, right? And not only a year later, he's celebrating Babaji's birthday. He's going to say, well, it's special because it's his 125th birthday anniversary, which is, of course, significant. And, you know, I mean, this is how we think about things. And 25 year periods right so you know they'll say it's that and they'll find a way to celebrate it next year and they'll find a way not to celebrate charges but during that period of time he also celebrated the Mahastav so that was a big gathering and he wants to do that every year so four gatherings are not a problem because he's going to have four gatherings this year it's a bit too much he said remember I've reread this message over and over again it's a bit too much. Four gatherings is a bit too much. I mean, he's such a pathetic, lying piece of crap. Just a horrible human being. And he's so bad at it. Like, he just gets caught. And he doesn't care because nobody calls him on his BS, right? I mean, he's just... It's pathetic. <laughs> he's like just a horrible human being. And so, um, you know, I've been waiting for these things to happen. Like, once he said it, I was waiting for the birthday to see what happened. So last year, you know, he has to celebrate Charji's birthday in Kana. And I don't know how he'll get away with it, not doing it this year, for local people, right? So he can't say, you know, that you can't celebrate locally. In fact, that's what he said. Instead of having a big gathering, you guys can all celebrate locally. But 30,000 people descended on the ashram. And so he had to make an announcement four days ahead of time about the gathering you know this announcement is coming quite uh you know i mean it's coming in march for an april gathering right two batches all these things and charges there's all these people who knew charge that's there's more charge people than anybody in the mission and he's not bringing in new people because he sucks and so you know whatever his problem with charge is he can't get rid of the birthday gathering altogether and they'll come to that ashram whether he likes it or not right? Like, even if he's not there, people will come. I mean, that's what they did last time. And so he had to accommodate them, and he pouted just like so little, like a little child. He pouted for like five sittings, embarrassing himself because 30,000 people showed up. And we'll see if they wait to the last minute to announce or they don't announce at all or whatever. But it's clear he has a problem with Charji. And, you know, the, I mean, it's just the whole thing. Um, and you know anybody with half a, a brain can see it and so the other thing is this um, somebody left one comment I meant to cover it yesterday on my video let me just get to this comment um, the person writes you are unnecessarily wasting your time and energy do deep self analysis um, to my video entitled Dodgy Harfulness cult Mastoff comes to a sad end with gift bags and failure. <laughs> that is a wonderful title. Well, um, you piece of crap. <laughs> Answering the person. I had a little glitch there for a second. I have to redo this. but Answering the person. Um, do deep analysis. Do deep self-analysis. With a small s. Um, the uh, 
Seismark system, that's the opposite of Seismark. You don't deal, do deep self-analysis. That's psychological, right? Like this person knows nothing about Seismark teachings, right? Because you're supposed to forget the self and, and remember the divinity within, right? That's the teachings. Remember him, right? Forget yourself and remember the divinity within you, the soul, the, the part of you that's a potential master, somebody who's mastered their ego and embraced their soul and surrendered to, surrendered to their own divinity and allows their divinity to guide them through life and, uh, you know, all of it. I mean, that's the essence of Seismark's system. Like anybody who reads any part of the system would know doing self-analysis, what you're supposed to say is you should do some cleaning, right? Or you should whatever. I mean, you get these stupid comments, but they never address the fact that Dodgy's a liar. I mean, he's just a liar. Like, he's... <laughs> it's so obvious that he's a liar. And they don't deal with any of that stuff. Um, you know, it's not much more to say about it. He, uh, he just lies about everything. And in such a way that it should be easy to see. He has a problem with charging. And no one can deny it. You can deny it, but, like, it's just obvious. There's some part of him that hates Chargy and he's been or whatever you know is going on with them and he doesn't say what it is but he clearly thinks he's better than Chargy and Chargy is no longer to be considered a master he's trying to erase Chargy from the mission and you can't do that as a master because as all the three other previous masters when they thought about the master they thought about the previous one their master like when they said the master they didn't mean themselves because they had been merged with you know Laoji merged into Babaji and became Babaji's like this inner you know his I don't want to say his soul but his soul right became his inner divinity and so when Babaji talked about or referred to the master he was referring to Laoji's essence inside of him which was doing the work, right? In a sense, each master of the system is the previous master. You know, there's their ego and their small self, which is their personality and things. And then the divinity that's in them is the previous master. You know, I showed you that video clip of Charji saying he never thought he was the master. And so for Daji to be a master, he has to embrace the essence that was Charji and talk about him, right? And, and he didn't really like Chargy's teachings, but when Chargy was alive, he talked about Chargy all the time. He talked about how great Chargy was, and, you know, my master this, master that. He referred to Chargy as his master. Now he refers to his master as Babaji. And I don't know when it, this happened. Of course, he said that he was prepared in secret behind Chargy. He's got a whole story there, but he's a failure. Like, the only thing that he can boast about is these celebrities that he has and the fact that he has this ashram that he completed you know started by Chargy he completed with Chargy's you know everything that he has in terms of an organization was built by Chargy you know and every piece of crap Abiyasi that is willfully denying this reality that Daji has a problem with Chargy is you know doing evil like they're disrespecting Chargy which I've said over and over again and so um you know there's not much to say about it. you guys see it you know it's not the people who see it see it and everyone else is like whatever you know <laughs> they don't care um but you know it's it's clear that the guy has a problem with his previous master and therefore he's cut off from the lineage of divinity that's been passed down He's operating on his own, and he's looking for material validation from outside authorities, whether it be a politician or celebrity, and these fake awards and all these things that he's, you know, that he's engaged in. He's he's doing he's downplaying the transmission, the cleaning, and he's making this to a for-profit organization, and just wrecking it like just a little, you know, just a, you know, this is just a little piece of crap human being right just wrecking something that wasn't his to wreck you know that wasn't his to I mean it's just uh you know unnecessarily like I said the only the only recourse I have is to believe that this is part of some divine plan and that Sajmarg will somehow live through this 
and you know there's enough people doing it that I don't know you know like that's you know it, I mean that's all I've got right in terms of that that's certainly a possibility and Babaji hinted at it in various talks whispers things and you know Chargy I guess even hinted at one talk where he said you know it won't matter if he's erased from history like Charge even said that towards the end of his life, maybe he knew it. Daji hated him. You know, I mean, just what a horrible uh, thing to do. Like, you know, what a disrespectful thing to do. For a guy like Daji, he would, he would come out and say, respected elders. At the beginning of his talks, he used to say respected elders. Brothers and sisters, dear ones or whatever, and respected elders. Like he always addressed the elders in some kind of, you know, Indian tradition kind of thing um like this you know having the respect of the elder generation to just crap all over Chargy's legacy and just you know he can't compare I mean Chargy was such a better person on every level and Daji's just a weak sad pathetic failure and looking for some outside validation to to show that he's doing a good job when pretty much anybody with any knowledge of Seismark system knows he isn't and I know that people have their doubts and they just won't verbalize them. They don't want to give up their preceptorship or they don't, you know, whatever weakness they have in their personality to not see the obvious that's going on and deal with it is, you know, that's pathetic in its own right. But anyhow, um, you know, that's that's that. And we'll just uh, see how it plays out. We know Babaji's going to have two celebrations and Babaji has the big statue there. And so there's no getting rid of Babaji's birthday. And then, um, you know, Tuktuji's birthday is coming up, too. <laughs> Tuktuji's birthday is the same day as Babaji's. But they don't celebrate that, even though Daji claimed that he merged in them, right? You know, I don't know if Tuktuji people were at that big gathering, but if they were, they weren't celebrated. Daji hasn't talked about it since, and he hasn't returned to that ashram after claiming Tuktuji merged him. Uh, so, <laughs> at least in my knowledge. And so that's an embarrassment. Like, the guy just lies and gets caught lying and gets exposed and the people just you know refuse to acknowledge it i mean it's so sad like it's you know just pathetic i'm not, not just in terms of size mark but in terms of human behavior like it's embarrassing everything about the dodgy debacle is embarrassing to humans never mind spiritual people and the whole thing anyways i'm gonna wrap this one up here one of the ways um in terms of the way that divinity works in counteracting non-divine acts, right? Human beings have the freedom of choice to do pretty much anything, right, that goes against the, the will of God and their soul's plan. And people do do that. We have freedom of choice to do the wrong thing. And the biggest part of that is lying, right? Lying is creating something that opposes God's creation, right? If God is the truth, which, you know, God is. If there's a God, then God is truth, right? Whatever's happening and whatever's honest and truthful is God, right? And a lie is something that diverts from that truth, diverts from the divine system. You know, there are subjective lies, like if, you know, somebody says to you, uh, you know, do I look fat? And you say, no, even though you think they do or whatever that's subjective that's your opinion that isn't a part of the divine system there's medical standards of obesity and being overweight all these things but if somebody asks you what they look like that's your opinion right it's based in your opinion right but if somebody asks you what your reasoning was for doing something wrong and you tell them something that makes you sound better than you actually are because you know what you thought inside but you don't reveal your thoughts you don't reveal your actions your plans in an honest way well that's something different right that's something where you're purposely deceiving that person to make yourself look better or to take advantage of them right and so with a spiritual master you're supposed to only tell the truth whatever the divine truth is you're supposed to not have a hidden agenda and say one thing but your thoughts and your plans and your manipulations are something different and that's why Daji, the fourth president of the Sajmark system, who's now created his own defunct cult called Heartfulness, is not a master because he lies about things constantly. But when you lie and you do something that goes against the divine creation and the will of God, uh, 
and there's a couple of different ways of lying lying to yourself and lying to others and either one of those situations the divine system then works to expose the lie and i think people have experienced this there's a pathway towards truth really good liars um understand this and realize that they have to create a plan for the truth coming out and somehow do to truth damage control right where they know the truth is going to come out and they have contingencies and plans in place to minimize the truth or confuse the people who are seeing the truth after they've been caught lying and do something to where there's doubt about and all of it right just to muddy the waters and we see this with our current day system the constant stream of lies and then these ways that the liars have of uh, avoiding getting the inevitable comeuppance when they get exposed as liars right and so that's happened with dodgy right now so the position of the master it's one thing that you evolve spiritually and you have reached a whatever spiritual goal in the Saj mark system it's merging in the source in the central region going through the yatra points and things like this but in terms of your relationships with people and being able to win people's hearts over which is what charji and babaji and laji were able to do through your work through your your commitment to other people your service to them to your service to your masters to service to god and also what your character qualities are saj Barg is a big part of it is being uh developing good character qualities it was talked about over and over by the previous masters and so it's also a trust position it's a position where people have to trust you right if you're going to turn your spiritual you know the path of your soul over to somebody then they better be able to trust you right <laughs> you know like they got to be able to trust that you're going to do what's um right for them and so i got a comment from a young woman abiyasi from india you know indian woman and it says as an abiyasi myself i know that the blindfold folded kids thing was fake i knew it the second i saw it other than that i don't know i respect your opinion and my personal experience with heartfulness has been good so far i love uh, and respect my preceptor he's a gem of a person i experienced transmission on his sittings other than that you might be true you might be true or not i have an open mind but he has done a great work in kana by planting the whole forest i mean there's good and bad i guess well not with a master right i mean i understand the perspective here but this is a person that's supposed to be a master and so he has to not engage with something like the brighter minds when i first looked into the brighter minds program before i even knew it was fully a scam like i didn't know it had been you know i didn't know all what i know about it now and you know i didn't know all the things he was promising right but even just the kids getting up and smelling rubik's cubes and you know putting blindfolds on no size mark master would ever do something like that like it's just too um you know it's too showy it's too it's like showing off and I mean, it's just not what it's not subtle. It's not anything Saj Marg's about. It's parlor tricks, you know, it's carnival esque. And the one thing that the other masters were worried about or understood, at least Charji, when it became a worldwide organization, is you don't want to appear cultish, right? There was a time years ago where there were these, um, you know, there's this um, preceptor, Clark Powell from Alabama, and he had a lot of kind of burnout. Um, potheads young kids uh who are you know in that city there's a you know university of i don't know alabama some i don't know where the you know where the city was but there was a college in there and there, they had a lot of college kids who tried the meditation and some of them went to see charji in india and charji got a call after a couple of weeks and the where worried parents were asking where their kids were and he handed he called these kids in and he handed them a phone and said call your parents right <laughs> Now, he did that, one, because the parents were worried. And Chargy's, you know, old school, you know, conservative and, you know, respecting elders and all these things, that you wouldn't leave your parents hanging going to a foreign country. Also, 
it brings a bad name on the mission because the parents, what, they're going to call the authorities and they think they're in some sort of a cult, right? I mean, all these things, right? And so there have been behaviors by people over the years that would make people possibly think it's a cult, right? Because of the behaviors of some of the you know crazy people in the mission. And so that's something you don't want. And I said that before. Once you're a cult, there's no reform cults. There's no, oh, that used to be a cult, right? Once you're a cult, you're a cult. You know, you, there's no recovering your brand from that. And you want to be a reputable organization. And so you have to behave in a way that people can trust you. And, you know, you can't trust Dodgy's decision-making for first falling for the Brighter Mind scam and then investing in it when it's so carnival-esque and then figuring out at some point that it's a scam and instead of walking away from it and doing some damage control or even apologizing and, and admitting what you did wrong, which, you know, once he did that, everyone will lose faith in him because only a fool would do what he's doing. I mean, how can you trust this guy, right? But instead, he doubled and tripled down. He tried to, you know, um, uh, I mean, what he did with that guy, that doctor, and, and he keeps on bringing people into this, and now he wants to roll it out in schools. And he knows it's a scam. He wants all these kids to lie for him. He wants all these people to embrace this thing rather than, you know, fall on his own sword for his own foolish behavior, right? So that's a really low person. It's not a money-making scam. I don't believe they're making very much money on it. And it's a scam, and it's embarrassing, right? Like this, you know, young lady, she knew what it was. I mean, people look at it and go, are you serious, blindfolds? I mean, people all know, like, you know, whether they're willing to admit that this is a deal breaker. You know, this tanks Dodgy's any chance he had of being a master because it's just, like, foolish. And, I mean, you just can't recover from something like this, right? It's so wrong on so many levels. And there's a number of things that he's done like that, and he keeps on doing more of them. And each one of them goes against the Sajmark teachings, and they show a person of, you know, a weakness of character and a selfish person and an arrogant person and, you know, all the things you can't be as a spiritual guide and spiritual master. You can't you be trusted. He can't be trusted, right? The thing is, people make mistakes. But if you're a spiritual person, a man of God or a woman of God or whatever, people are looking up to you, you have to raise your behavior. You have to be at least somebody... I mean, you don't have to be the nicest person. You know, you don't have to be, you know, fake nice or things like that. But, you know, you have to be somewhat social. You have to be somewhat polite and respectful and, and whatever it is, right? You can't be hurting people's feelings left and right. But at least, you know, you have to be honest and you have to be trustworthy and you have to have people's back and you have to be able to, you know, convince people that you'll be there for them. And Dodgy isn't any of those things, right? I mean, he's very selfish and very weak. And you can't trust the guy. You can't trust the guy to be there for you. And I experienced that on a lot of levels, you know, when I was figuring this thing out, right? You know, when he turned on me when I needed him most, when I needed the organization the most, and, you know, which eventually led to the breakup of my family and my, you know, daughter's suicide and just really, you know, hard times. And I'm like, I don't need this organization at all, right? I got through this without them. I mean, certainly I was, you know, the, the cleanings and the sittings and things like this but you know I learned to connect directly because I couldn't trust the organization I couldn't trust the preceptors I couldn't trust Dodgy and you know there are good preceptors like this young lady saying there are valid preceptors and you know the transmission is going to come anyway for for you and anybody else who's sincere you're not going to be robbed of the opportunity of transmission but it doesn't mean that you can't get it without Dodgy because you can you can do the gracefulest meditation and see, you know, my other YouTube channel that deals with this stuff. And you can experience the sittings and transmission that me and other people are experiencing there without having the burdensome obstacle that Dodgy is a person of poor character. And so, you know, that's just, you know, how it is. He's not a good person, right? Like he's failed. He's failed himself. Like he's for nothing. Like, you know, the brighter minds thing. Why would anybody do that? It's zero. I don't see any reward in it at all, right? Like, it's just a bad decision. I mean, it's like moronic, <laughs> like how stupid it is and how bad it is, right? But it's a bad decision. He's made it, and he has to suffer the consequences from it, right? Which is he's lost all credibility, and he really can't be a spiritual person because of it. And you guys can, you know, if you're Abiyasis, you can say, 
well, you know, people make mistakes. Yeah, but not masters, not like this, right? And, you know, he's made the mistake. You know, there's crimes of passion. There's a momentary lapse of judgment. You know, whatever happened in the beginning of this thing. But the longer it goes on and the more that you, you know, the cover up is always worse than the crime. And whenever Dodgy realized that this thing's a scam and he realized people were pissed off about it and they were leaving the mission and, you know, I mean, it wasn't just, you know, people said they were threatened and intimidated and gaslit by preceptors and other people trying to cover this thing up, right? You know, all non-spiritual behaviors, I mean, abusive behaviors. You know, these are things that happen in cults, right? And he turned this thing into a cult rather than own up. You know, and you can't, I mean, the stuff he's done with Chargy, and you just can't, you know, you can't reverse these things, right? I mean, you can't, you know, it's just, it's bad stuff. It's bad form. You know, it's a, what bad people do. It's the opposite of being a spiritual person. You can know spiritual knowledge, but is this how you behave? I mean, this is the kind of person you are. This is the kind of example you're setting for other people. Like, how can people look up to you and aspire to be like you when you're doing criminal behavior and you're exhibiting these types of attitudes and, you know, character qualities? Like, no one can, you know, look at him and say, oh, yeah, I, I, that's, that's the guy I want to be like, right? I have zero respect for him. Like, we all make mistakes, but when you reach this level and you have this position, you have to surrender your ability to make mistakes and you can only do the right thing. It's, you know, something that people don't easily give up on, right? People don't like to give up on the, their ability to do the wrong thing, right? People like the freedom to make mistakes and do the wrong thing and, you know, behave in a, a wrongful way. Like, that's one of the reasons people don't become spiritual. They don't want to give up on the things that they enjoy that they know they'd have to give up if they became a spiritual person, right? But then there's also the perception of it. So there's a couple of, um, there's a, a couple of stories that illustrate this, right? So Babaji, you know, was a vegetarian like the other masters of the system. I think Kamlesh may, may or may not eat meat based on things I've heard, which is fine. You know, I used to be a vegetarian. I was for 18 years. But now I eat meat and things like this because I can't, you know, I can't do this work and be on the Internet and, uh, you know, without it, right? It's just something that happened quite naturally. It wasn't something I, I necessarily chose, but it was just the right thing to do. But in terms of Babaji, he had an ulcer and he was really, you know, physical. He had physical issues. And he was told that he needs to drink chicken stock. And there are people that told me that, you know, they made omelets for him, that he was eating eggs, which is, you know, not a vegetarian diet, but he just needed to do that. And so he asked Lalaji, he said, a doctor says I need to eat, drink chicken stock for my ulcer. And Lalaji said, don't ask me about this. You know, he intercommuned. Lalaji you know, had been dead for a number of years and he's intercommuting with Lalaji. And Lalaji said, don't ask me this because if this got out, I'd be ruined in southern India, you know, where they're very strict vegetarians. You know, that the mission in Lalaji's, you know, mission and organization, now Babaji's, would be ruined if they found out the guy was drinking chicken chicken broth, right? I mean, that's, you know, just how it is there. And there was another uh, time where, you know, um, they were in uh, Shah Jahanpur, and Charji came from southern India where they were um, very, you know, it doesn't get cold at all. In northern India, it gets very hot in the summer, but it's very you know cold in the winter, cold for Charji. And they were sitting outside. It was rather nippy. It was just Charji and Babaji. And Babaji whips out a flask of brandy, right? <laughs> and just for warmth, right, he, he gives Charji a little sip, and he takes a little sip, and he puts it away. You know, not that they got drunk or anything like that, right? And then Babaji looks at Charji and says, this is private talk, <laughs> You know, because he didn't want people to know that this had happened because it would be, they, they judge a master by standards of the guys taking a sip of a brandy or drinking some chicken stock. But Dodgy's run a criminal scam, you know, so it's so much worse than that. And he's doing it perpetually, even when he knows the, you know, when I made videos about this and I sent him a voiceover and, you know, I, I verbalized that I didn't discover this, that people told me about it and they're pissed off and, People are, you know, I explained all the behaviors I heard people saying were going on and associating with this cover-up. And he still is pushing it out there, knowing that, you know, I mean, this is cult, you know, how you become a, labeled a cult 101. The brighter minds thing it looks so culty. And people seeing it are going to think it's a cult. And 
you know, Heartfulness will get that cult label, which I'm gladly providing for them here, right? And so, um, you know, this is what happens. And, like, this is what happens when you engage in these behaviors. And as somebody who's on a high level of spirituality, you can't do that, right? You have to just be better than that, like, way better. Like, just, I mean, this is, um, you know, I just, I can't even wrap my mind around it. Like, it's just it's so bad. And so I don't know why anybody would say it's okay. And it's, you know, I mean, this is not some BS thing, right, where these guys are, they're masters only in, in performance. Like, so they throw on robes and, you know, like priests are and, like, the Pope is and, like, you know, you know, Sadhguru just um, had some kind of brain aneurysm or something. He had to have brain surgery. He's, like, 66 or something. So, um, you know, that happened. <laughs> They just some someone said that to me, or I think that guy um, uh, Naranja Narank, that guy who's uh, anti brighter minds, posted it, and he was, you know, he's I think an atheist. Atheist. He's a you know the rationalist society, so I think he's an a Indian atheist. And you know, I mean, like this has created this friction, you know, in the with the you know these people who see uh, the brighter mind scam as being something that's you're selling and lying to people and it just gives religion and spirituality a bad name. I mean, it's a horrible thing. And all those kids growing up being taught to lie, what happens to them when they realize, you know, how effed up this is, right? When they grow up and realize how screwed up this is. And so, you know, I mean, Dodgy has just failed everybody, himself and certainly the masters and the organization. And there's no turning this thing around. But anyways... Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paramount definitely reporting for the apocalypse. And the ascension, everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.